Magandang umaga, Pilipinas, to all our online viewers. Again, isang napakasayang Friday morning sa inyong lahat. On behalf of the Flexible Learning Modality Task Force of Pampanga State Agricultural University, welcome sa aming webinar on designing assessment in science courses. So before we begin anything at bago natin talakay ng anumang importanteng bagay na pwede nating ikatuto o madagdag sa ating kaalaman sa pagtuturo, we will all be led to a prayer by Mr. Michael Sigwa. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. God Almighty, we glorify and thank you for all the blessings you have given us, especially the gift of life. Starting a fruitful day with everyone reminds us of your love and mercy. We pray and humbly ask you to bestow upon our speakers the greatest inspiration so that they may share the most of their knowledge and expertise regarding the topic. May we also apply and share what we may learn on today's webinar. We pray that you bless the FLM Task Force, PSAU Faculty and Administration, that we may be able to fulfill our tasks responsibly that the objectives we have set may be achieved. Your generous blessing will mean the success of this webinar. We know that without it, we can do nothing. Grant us your divine blessing as we say, I will continue, oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of you. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Michael Sigwa, for that wonderful prayer. Again, sa ating lahat, dear online viewers, good morning. Once again, this is your moderator, Mr. Dexter Andrew O. Manalo from the College of Education of Pampanga State Agricultural University. As early as now, pasasalamatan po namin ang lahat ng mga nag attend sa aming mga webinar at sa lahat ng sumusuporta sa Flexible Learning Modality Task Force ng PSAU para higit na matulungan tayong lahat na mag-adjust para sa new normal. So before we go with the talk this morning, let's have a recap. Ano na ba ang ating natapos? So nung mga nakaraang mga webinar, nagkaroon tayo ng discussions about online learning, distance education, and last Wednesday, ang pinag-usapan natin ay ang pagtuturo ng mathematics para sa new normal, which was really very challenging, or yung topic is quite challenging for Mathematics teacher. Ngayon naman, magkakaroon tayo ng usapan tungkol sa paggawa ng assessment for science courses. At ngayong umaga, kasama po natin sa webinar na ito ang dalawang resource speakers from the Faculty of Education of the University of the Philippines, Open University. So, sila na po bahala magpakilala sa mga sarili nila. <laughs> And here they are. Dear online viewers, ang ating two esteemed resource speakers, Assistant Professor Roja Rivera and Assistant Professor Charisse Reyes. Please take it away. Hello, po. Okay, po ba? Naririnig po ba ako? Hello po, good morning. Uh, kami po ni Roja ay galing sa Faculty of Education UP, sa UP Open University. So, bale ako ay nagtuturo ng um, chemistry, but very basic chemistry. There's only five courses in chemistry at UPOU. 
however, I also teach science education courses uh, such as assessment and um, foundations of science. So, hello po sa lahat at good morning. Good morning po. Ako po si Roja Rivera from the Faculty of Education in UP Open University. Um, magkasama po kami ni um, Assistant Professor Cha sa Faculty of Education. Although ang uh, concentration po, po ay nasa uh, field of education talaga. So ang um, um, field ko po ay sa educational psychology, pero yung undergraduate ko po ay um, secondary education, major in um, biology. So um, medyo matagal din po ako nagturo sa basic ed, uh, almost eight years po, biology po, uh, ang subject uh, area po before I um, became a regular faculty of Open University. Mm -hmm. uh, so today po, we will be sharing with you some principles in assessment as well as some practices that you can apply in designing your assessments in your science courses. So ako po, mag-start po ako by uh, laying down the framework the principles that we could um, use in designing our assessments. And later on, Ma'am Chia will provide you with um, the concrete and specific um, uh, assessment methods and um, samples that draw some ideas from. Okay, po. So let's begin po. So what is assessment nga po? So what is assessment? So according, according to Harvard, the time, knowledge, expertise, and resources available in order to Actually, this definition highlights three important aspects. First po, systematic collection, then information, and decisions. So in the process of assessment, we make use of different approaches and methods to gather data about our students' learning. These data are interpreted and used to make decisions regarding teaching and learning processes. It can be noted that the process of assessment involves making decisions at several points during the entire process. Um, we make decisions when we se select um, um, assessment approaches and methods, when we curate and choose resources and media that we deem appropriate for the topic, uh, the content, um, and the assessment that we provide our students. We also determine how we will handle and analyze uh, the outputs and the, the results of the assessment. And we also decide on how they will be used, this information, how they will be used to inform and improve student learning and teaching processes. So these are some of the decision points we make when we do assessments. So as you can see, madami po talaga tayong ginagawang um, decisions, uh, hindi lang during the assessment, eh, even way before, during the design process. So truly, Assessment is inherently a process of professional judgment. Um, uh, we, our judgment is based on our disciplinal, content, pedagogical, and technological knowledge as teachers. So kaya importante talaga yun eh, na ma-emphasize sa atin ano ba yung mga fundamental principles that we have to um, use as our guide in making these decisions. Um, this is the reason din po now we decided to start this webinar um, with the framework, with the principles. Kasi ito po yung ating lighthouse. Eh. Um, this will guide us in our decisions. So maaali po na in the past, uh, you have encountered this in your um, previous um, seminars or webinars. Pero it is useful, uh, I believe it is useful for us to review them again. Para ma-emphasize lang po. Uh, and uh, we reiterate. So why do it? So why do we have to do assessment? So, <clears throat> excuse me. so according to Joffin, uh, there are three fundamental um, reasons 
or purposes of assessment. So first is uh, we do assessment to support learning. So, so assessments are not only for our use as teachers. So it's not only for us to determine the level of achievement of our students, and then from there, we decide what to do after. Assessments can also be a learning of opportunity for our students. The process of completing the assessment and uh, um, the accomplishment of the requirements in itself enable the students to make deeper meaning and uh, and really and enable them to realize the connection of application of concepts to real life situations, actual practices, prior learning, uh, or personal experiences which could lead to richer and more meaningful meaningful learning so kumbaga kung iisipin natin uh, assessments are not only for our own use as teachers assessments are actually opportunities for our students to deepen their uh, understanding of the concepts that we are teaching them so by doing the assessment they get to practice the skills that we want to develop and apply the knowledge that you want them to uh, build. So that is one of the um, purpose purposes of assessment. So apart from that, uh, apart from developing knowledge and skills, skills through assessment, the feedback that we provide them as teachers, as well as the feedback that they receive from their peers can also help them um, gain valuable insights as to how they could improve um, their learning and as well as their performance. Um, this feedback also enable them to take notice of their learning gaps and impel them to take action on them. So, kumbaga, from the feedback, um, we help our students to be more responsible for their own learning. Kasi with the feedback, they, they get to realize ano pa ba yung mga weaknesses nila that they need to address. And in a way, this develop um, lifelong learning skills and metacognition that we want our students to learn. Kasi hindi naman sila forever nasa isang classroom learning environment where in, uh, may teacher that will point out to them kung ano yung mga kailangan nilang gawin. They have to develop the skills of learning on their own. Kasi in real life, ganun naman talaga. We learn on our own. Um, so yung skills of introspection, um, reflectivity, important po yan for them to be able to be successful um, professionals someday. So we help them through the assessment that we provide them. So another purpose of assessment is to um, serve as basis for judgment student um, achievement. So assessment are tools teachers can use to judge a student's performance and achievement in relation to course and program goals and objectives. Uh, the data and information that we obtain from the assessment can help them arrive at conclusions on student achievement. So I mean help us arrive tayo as teachers and actually in a way our students too. Diba? Um, more or less with the feedback that we provide um, through the assessment, uh, they are also able to more or less gauge their standing and how well they perform in our courses. Tayo then, uh, from the data, data that we collect from the assessment, we get to uh, see the level of performance of our, of our students and uh, arrive at a decision kung uh, our students are able to achieve the, the learning objectives or not. Diba? And then kung within, kung within the duration of the instruction, yan, we can do intervention. We make changes, we make modifications in our teaching strategies, uh, in the assessments that we provide, in the learning activities, and in the resources. So we could provide supplementary resources kasi nakita natin na our students need um, support pa in terms of um, comprehension and uh, content knowledge. Um, kung yan naman ay ginawa natin at the end of the term, so based on the data that we collect, we get to make a decision if we pass the students or um, they need to re-enroll the course. So the course. So, um, so 
eto I think is the most common use of um, assessment. Um, however, hindi lang yon. Assessment can also help us maintain professional and disciplinal standards. So, so these stand. Uh, sorry. So these standards um, that we follow are deemed to be anchored on the needs of people, communities, and societies. Kaya nga uh, we try to as much as possible stick with it um, and uh, make sure that uh, our students achieve these objectives. Kasi nga uh, we have already uh, made that assessment that these are what the students need uh, in order to perform well um, in in their discipline in the future. Um, the design of our assessments and, meth and the methods that we use um, could enable our students to demonstrate and practice knowledge and skills needed in the profession and the discipline. So these are the um, main purposes of um, assessment according to Jaffin. So what are the steps? Okay. So there are three general uh, steps in the process of assessment. So first is the establishment of goals. So these are the things that we want our students to be able to do uh, when they complete the course of study. So usually we call these uh, outcomes or objectives. Um, and these course goals uh, are anchored on program goals that we have established in the institution. And next is the gathering of information through different assessment approaches and methods. So the information tell us um, how well our students are able to achieve these goals and the factors that could have, uh, could have influenced their learning. So this information may be called measures, evidence, or judgment. So after this information have been collected, uh, we will interpret and analyze this to form judgments and decisions. So from this, this um, from these judgments, um, we identify points of actions. So what are the actions that we need to do in order to improve improve our students' learning? So this is the third step. So. So how could we use the information to improve our students' learning? So do we make changes in our teaching strategy? Do we uh, provide additional scaffolds? Do we provide additional learning activities? Do we provide them with additional resources to help them um, understand the topics more? So, um, so these are the actions, some of the actions that we need to um, think about um, based on the information that we collected uh, from the assessment that we provide. So this um, step uh, can, be, um, can be called as closing the loop. Closing the loop. <clears throat> so what are the different types of assessments? So I think um, in your uh, previous webinar, uh, Dr. Rabahante, had already highlighted some of these types. Um, so assessments can be classified in various of, various ways. So may mga categories. So first, um, we can categorize assessment based on the methods used. So assessments can be formal or informal based on the method. So formal assessments are assessments um, that are more structured because they are designed and developed prior to the administration of the assessment. And there are established uh, criteria. Uh, there are established criteria and uh, standards. So these are our usual assessments. Yung alam natin ng mga assessments. Like these are the, the um, quizzes that we give. Um, the tests, group activities, projects, assignments. So yung mga yon na we design ahead of time, these are called formal assessments. And there are also um, assessments that are informal. So ito yung mga spontaneous assessments natin, which may happen anytime during the instruction. So what are these, uh, what, are the ex what are some of the examples of informal assessments? So uh, observations. 
So uh, our observations of our students' behaviors and responses um, will somehow enable us to gauge kung naiintindihan ba nila yung concepts or not. Um, so yung ating observation on how they perform a task uh, and uh, how they demonstrate the target skill can also be a, an informal assessment. In a way, it, it, they help us um, kumbaga, assess uh, if our students are already um, developing the skills that we want them to develop. Or um, if our students are al already demonstrating the um, desired attitudes that we hope to develop among them. So yung mga observations natin. Even when we talk with our students informally, so nakikita natin yung mga traits and the uh, um, attitudes that our students have. And then um, because we understand, we get to get to know our students more, we understand how they operate. Um, in a way, this help, uh, this information help us um, craft, design our lessons that will be able to um, reach uh, our students based on their characteristics. Kaya importante yung how well we know our students when we design um, not only our assessments but our entire course. So another um, group of assessments um, are based on uh, the form of assessments being given and what they measure. So there are two types uh, based on the form of assessments and and um, their measurement. So the traditional assessment and the alternative forms of assessment. So the traditional assessments are the paper and paper and pen type of ex assessments. Ito yung mga usual tests, standardized, standardized tests, uh, multiple choice item tests, uh, true or false, um, kahit yung mga short answer or essay type of assessment, uh, these are classified under tra traditional forms of assessment. However, um, hindi lang naman ito yung uh, klase ng assessment. There are also al alternative forms of assessments um, that are um, focused on the demonstration and application of knowledge and skills. Um, alternative assessments are more learner-centered and performance-based. So examples of these are yung projects, portfolios, and hands-on activities where students will have to show that they really understand the concepts and apply them in completing these activities in this, these assessments and um, producing the outputs that you, require, that you require of them. Okay, so another um, set of assessment assessment types um, are based on the time of administration of the assessment. So there are three types, although pwede mo ding gawing dalawa na lang. So may pre-assessment, uh, formative assessment, and the sum summative assessment. So the pre-assessment uh, are conducted prior to the instruction. So uh, we do this because we want to find out what the students already know and what their entry skills are. So why do we want to know this? Because this information helps us, um, this, this information help us design our course as well. So kung alam na natin kung ano yung mga alam na nila, we could anchor our lesson based on what they already know. Um, Kung, hindi, kung alam na rin natin kung ano yung mga skills na hindi pa nila nandidevelop, we also know what other skills we need to develop in our students through our courses. Kaya importante yung pre-assessment. Um, sometimes pre-assessment is clustered uh, under formative assessment na rin because um, hindi naman sila graded talaga. So formative assessment on the other hand, are given during the entire duration of the instruction. So this may be uh, ungraded. So formative assessments uh, are meant to help you uh, gather information on the progress of the students. So this will allow you to see 
what their learning gaps are. So ano pa yung mga kailangan intervention na i-provide? Uh, or are they uh, learning what they are supposed to learn? And during this period, may time ka pa to make adjustments. And then last is the summative assessment. So ito na yung uh, type of assessment at the end, usually at the end to of a learning unit or the course. So you give this to make sure that the students already achieved the learning objectives or the learning outcomes. Na uh, through the summative assessment, you get to see uh, if the students have achieved your targets or your goals uh, or the goals that you set uh, for the course. So through the summative assessment, the students uh, are able to demonstrate their knowledge and skills and how well they have achieved the learning objectives. Now, this is the last set of assessments. Um, these types of assessment are classified naman according to the assessment purpose. So there are three types, assessment for learning, assessment of learning, and assessment as learning. So assessment for learning are assessments given to determine students' um, progress. So kumbaga, this is similar to formative assessment. So pwede mong isama dyan yung pre-assessment because you get to see yung starting point ng student and then yung formative, formative assessment naman, makikita mo naman how they progress. Now, from this starting point, they supposedly dapat na elevate na build yung skills during the instruction. So, makikita mo yung building of skills na yun through the formative assessment that you provide. So, ano yung, ano yung mga yan? Formative assessment, quizzes discussion forums, group work. So yung mga small learning activities na low stakes. So yung hindi naman ganun ka-heavy ang, ang, uh, ang, ang bulk niya, yung component niya dun sa final grade. Yan, formative assessments. Yan. Or pwede ding hindi nga siya graded. Kasi ang intention mo is to, um, to determine yung progress ng students and ano pa yung need, need needs ni um, support na kinakailangan nila for them to achieve yung learning objective mo. So yung assessment for learning um, does this. So kaya pa din uh, mo rin siyang tawagin na formative assessment. So assessment of learning on the other hand is more similar to uh, summative assessment. Kasi it occurs when teachers use evidence of student learning to make judgments on student achievement against goals and standards. So dito sa assessment of learning, you really determine na. You determine if the students have indeed achieved the learning objectives. So usually, kagaya ng summative assessment, uh, these are administered um, at, at the end of a unit or at the end of the course. So, uh, yung another type, which is very different from the others, ay uh, yung assessment as learning. Kasi madalas, uh, most of the time, we, we forget na uh, we have to let our students reflect and monitor their own learning and their own progress. So, hindi lang, kagaya na nabanggit ko kanina, hindi lang for our use yung assessment. So, yung assessment as learning, it is these types of assessments are for our students' use. So these types of assessments enable our students to reflect, reflect on their learning, mm -hmm. reflect on their performance and how they are doing. So bakit importante yung reflection and monitoring nila sa sarili nila? Uh, these are important because we allow, we enable our students to uh, realize what they need in terms of their learning. Um, so, kapag na-realize ng students na ito yung mga gaps ko, ito yung needs ko, um, matututut, marirealize na rin nila na they have to do something about it. So, what um, this in, uh, develop um, skills uh, in regulating them their own learning and being responsible for their own learning. So, dito pumapasok yung self-regulation, um, self-discipline, uh, self-directedness, independent learning. 
So kung tayo ay papasok sa online learning, itong assessment as learning, very important siya. Kasi you are not there all the time to tell them what they need to do. Uh, and even if, and even if wala tayo sa online learning na, na mode, hindi rin naman healthy na lagi tayo nandun to tell them what to do. Uh, eventually, our students need to learn how to learn. Kasi ito yung skills na madadala nila after they have graduated. Ito yung mga skills na kailangan nila para ma-improve nila yung sarili nila on their own without anyone telling them what they need to do. Yung independence na yun, yung self-motivation na yun to discover and to understand themselves and so that they could make improvements. Kasi minsan ito yung nakakalimutan natin, yung pagiging reflective. Dere-derecho lang tayo sa ginagawa natin, na, na kakalimutan natin mag-step back, tingnan, tama pa ba yung ginagawa natin. So, kaya importante yung assessment as learning as part of your uh, arsenal of uh, assessment methods. So, I hope kapag nag-design kayo ng mga um, assessment ninyo, um, you include all these types and make room for assessment as learning. Kasi valuable yung skills na nadidevelop ninyo uh, sa method na to. Okay? So, ngayon, pasok na tayo dun sa ano ba yung mga dapat natin pag-isipan kapag magdi-design tayo ng assessment. So, what are the aspects that we need to think about when designing assessments? So, first is the alignment. So, or constructive alignment. So, this is one of the very important aspects of designing not only assessments but courses. Um, nakalimutan ko pala sabihin before I proceed. Although um, the main topic that we are talking about this morning is only about assessment, uh, we have to realize na um, yung assessment is part of the entire instruction. So although pinag-uusapan natin sila separately, Wag natin kalilimutan na yung assessment isa siyang part ng buong course, ng isang buong unit. Um, at ito ay connected sa lahat ng gagawin mong decisions sa buong kurso mo. So, dapat nakatahi yung assessment natin sa teaching strategy natin at sa content natin. So, precisely ito yung tinu uh, sinasabi ng constructive alignment. So, our assessment should be aligned with the int intended learning outcomes. So, ito yun, intended learning outcomes. So, our intended learning outcomes, um, um, for example, ito yung mga unit learning objectives ninyo. So, for this unit, ito yung mga learning objectives. So, itong mga learning objectives na to are anchored on your course objectives, yung course learning outcomes. So, yung buong kurso, ito, um, sa syllabus natin, di ba, may mga course objectives tayo. Tapos, yung each unit or each module, kung module yung i-develop ninyo later on, uh, may mga small learning objectives yan. So, yung mga small learning objectives ninyo should be um, anchored or based on your course learning objectives. Tapos, kung lalawakan pa natin yung perspective, itong course learning outcomes ninyo or learning objectives should be aligned naman with your program goals. No? So, nag-OBE tayo, di ba? So, tinuturo sa atin yan sa OBE na yung alignment ng program goals ninyo with your course learning outcomes or learning objectives and your um, intended learning outcomes in each of the units that... Um, that a course has. Okay? So, so when you know the learning objectives, you will know na rin yung inyong um, assessment methods. Okay? So, bakit? So, tatanungin natin, bakit mo malalaman kung ano yung learning, uh, yung assessment mo kung alam mo na yung learning objectives mo? Kasi precisely, uh, yung assessment mo ay ginagawa mo to determine kung 
yung students mo na achieve niya yung learning outcomes. So kung alam mo yung learning outcomes mo, alam mo din kung ano yung dapat mong i-assess. Therefore, alam mo din kung ano yung mga assessment tasks na ipapagawa mo sa kanya. So for example, if you want your students to define to define a concept, so dapat ipapa-define mo talaga siya sa estudyante. So yung assessment task mo will require them to give a definition. Oh. So ngayon pag tin pag uh, tiningnan mo siya um um iko-connect ko to dun sa previous lesson um previous webinar ni Sir Rabahante uh, where he explained to you the Bloom's taxonomy, di ba? So kung titingnan naman natin sa level ng Bloom's taxonomy, yun define na sa ang level siya, nasa may bandang um um early early level. So in nasa initial level siya ng learning um, skills, di ba, o cognitive skills in define, nasa um, foundational skills siya. So, pero we shouldn't stop, di ba, sa mga foundational skills, na, like recall, um, at saka yung mga, yung where students need to recall information. Kailangan maangat yung learning skills, di ba? So, pwedeng next step, application. So, ang next na learning objective ninyo, apply. For example, something, yung concept. Apply ay, ay, yung kung ano yung topic ninyo. Um, so, apply. Um, so, application. Kung gawa tayong magandang example. So, for example, um, application of skills. Ah, so, for example, the student should be able to, um, kung microscopy ito, ah, the, your, uh, the student should be able to uh, use the microscope in identifying the type of cells. Okay. So, kung yun yung um, learning objective mo, use or manipulate um, the microscope, therefore, ang assessment mo, manipulation talaga of a, a microscope. Diba? So, kasi ang dinidevelop mo na skills ay yung pagmamanipulate ng microscope. So, dapat may hands-on activity. Activity ka for that. So, yun yung ibig sabihin na yung assessment tasks mo are based on your learning objectives. Kasi lahat dapat ng binibigay mo activities and assessment tasks are connected or aligned with your learning objectives. Wala kang papagawa na walang kinalaman doon sa objective mo. Otherwise, um, it would be, um, uh, it will take away some of the time and resources that you have na supposedly being used to achieve the learning objectives. Okay? So, um, when you determine, after determining the assessment tasks, uh, malalaman mo na rin ano yung mga learning activities mo. So, ito. Kasi you know at the end of the lesson what your student should be able to demonstrate. Therefore, yung mga learning activities, ito yung mga formative assessments, mga maliliit na assessment tasks that you provide them to help them build the skills and the knowledge base for them to be able to achieve the learning objectives and for them to be able to accomplish the assessment tasks. Yun yung ipapagawa mo sa learning activities mo. No? So ano to, uh, kung halimbawa gusto mo lang mag-determine yung level of understanding nila, comprehend ba nila yung um, concepts. Comprehension lang. So yung mga quizzes, yan, pwede mo niya ibigay. So ngayon kung um, gusto mo pang idipen yun, um, pwede ka maglagay ng mga discussion forums. So discussion forums will allow the students to expound on what they know. Kasi i-explain nila so makikita mo kung how well they are able to explain what uh, to explain the concepts. Therefore, you can make an, uh, a decision or a judgment na, ah, the students really understand kasi they are able to um, explain the concept well. Pero, um, hindi lang yon di ba? I-verify mo. Sige, kaya mo ang i-explain, pero kaya mo nga bang i-apply. So, pwede ka magbigay ng mga problem sets, um, pwede ka magbigay ng mga problem-solving activities, group work, ganyan, para 
to verify nga kung kaya nilang i-apply yung nalalaman nga nila. Uh, and therefore, build on the skills para at the end of the the unit or the course, pag ginawa na nila yung summative assessment, kaya na nilang gawin yung papagawa ni, um, ipapagawa mo sa kanila. Uh, at madidemonstrate din nila yung learning objective, yung skills na identified sa learning objectives mo. Okay, so alam mo na yung, alam mo na yung assessment mo, yung um, summative assessment mo, alam mo na yung mga learning activities na ipapagawa mo. So therefore, supposedly, alam mo na rin yung mga resources na pipiliin mo. Because you know the topic, you know the learning objectives, you know all the assessments and activities that you will ask your students to do, then you will know then uh, what resources your students will need in order to build the knowledge that you require from them and to build the skills that they will need to accomplish all these tasks. So, uh, at madaling iba't ibang resources. Um, especially online. So we have a myriad of um, resources that we could use. So may audio, may video, may multimedia, may interactive resources na ito sa, for science courses very useful yung interactive courses. Uh, I mean, interactive resources where the students can really um, take part, kumbaga, with the processing of the content and uh, testing their knowledge kasi may makaka uh, interact sila with the resource um, so maganda na hindi lang one way yung communication with the student na sinasabi lang na ito yung mga concepts ito yung mga dapat mong malaman pero sa pagpili natin ng resource uh, maganda din yung interactivity that the students are able to interact with the co with the resource hindi lang yung makikinig sila o manunood sila kasi para lang din niyang spoon feeding, di ba? Kung ang pinili nating resource ay puro video, um, video lang, o kaya puro um, magbabasa lang sila, na wala silang gagawin doon sa mga resource na yon, then para lang ang ginagawa natin, nagtatransmit lang tayo ng information. Okay lang yon, pero hindi dapat tayo nagsastop doon. Kasi di ba, may mga skills tayong gustong i-develop. Inaangat natin yung thinking skills ng estudyante natin. Ayaw naman natin na para lang silang nag absorb ng information. We have to, di ba, gusto din naman natin mat matutunan ng mga estudyante pag-isipan yung mga natututunan nila. So kung halimbawa ang wala kang iba makitang resource na may interactive component, then you create a learning activity that will e that will enable your students to engage with the content. So, meron kang um, text-based na resource or sige sabihin natin audio resource na one-way ang communication, di gumawa ka ng learning activity para yung mga estudyante mo will interact with the resource. What do I mean interact? Ibig sabihin, pwede mo silang um, uh, i-ask na na Pwede ka mag-ask ng mga critical thinking questions for them to think about in a deeper way kung ano yung sinasabi ng, ng uh, resource na yon. So, uh, o kaya mag-create ka ng, ng situation o scenario wherein the students will have to make use of that resource in order to answer your question. So, yung, yung mga ganung way. So, dito sa constructive alignment na to, na framework, makikita natin how all the elements of our instruction are connected. Makikita din natin, and in a way, diba, madidesign natin siya completely in a seamless, logical, and coordinated fashion. Diba? So, yan yung relevance ng constructive alignment. Okay. So, next, um, there are other principles of assessment that we should also think about apart from alignment. So first is the appropriateness. So our um, assessment methods, are the, the assessment strategies, approaches, and methods that we um, choose should be appropriate 
uh, with our learners' um, characteristics. Kaya nga sinabi natin na it's important to do the pre-assessment kasi um, doon mo malalaman kung has, has ang level na ba yung estudyante mo. So it should match uh, the competency of your students. Um, it would be unfair to us uh, them to do something that is way beyond their capability. Dapat nasa appropriate level of difficulty din siya, uh, appropriate developmental level. So it should not be too easy and not too difficult naman that uh, kasi kapag it's too difficult, this would increase cognitive demand. Um, ngayon, kapag masyadong magbigat yung pinapagawa mo sa kanila that is way beyond their capacity, uh, ano mangyayari sa stud students mo? So one, pwede mag-give up na lang sila kasi hindi nila kaya. Hindi nila alam kung paano gagawin. Hindi enough yung skills nila and yung knowledge nila for them to be able to do what you're asking them to do or to answer the question that you're asking. Either mag-give up sila or ma-force silang mag-cheat. Kasi uh, hindi nila alam magagawin so hahanap sila ng paraan para magawa nila. Okay? So kaya kailangan tamang balance sila. Uh, uh, appropriate siya uh, doon sa kung ano ang hinihingi mo uh, sa kurso mo, uh, appropriate din siya doon sa kung paano mo nga ba develop yung skills para magawa nila yung assessment na yun. And uh, appropriate to the purpose of your assessment. Okay. So, another then ay kung mag incorporate kayo ng technology, your assessment, should, yung incorporation din ng technology should be appropriate then. Okay. So, next is validity and rea reliability. So, uh, very important to sa assessment. So, our assessment should be able to uh, uh, be used accurately and consistently so as to measure what they intend to measure. So, dapat consistent and accurate yon. So, um, you provide assessments that we really measure what you want to measure. Hindi ka magbibigay ng assessment na labas doon sa, pag sa learning objectives mo. Uh, and this should, yung assessment mo then should be uh, consistent. Um, so your assessment should also be clear and consistent. Um, your assessment tasks, instructions, and questions should be clear and unambiguous. They should also be consistent with the intended purposes and learning outcomes and should be communi communicated well to the students. So, importante yung communication. Kasi maaaring in our minds, naiintindihan natin, alam natin yung gusto natin ipagawa sa estudyante, clear yung design ng uh, assessment natin in conjunction, in relation with other aspects of the instruction. Pero, alam ba ng estudyante natin yun? Clear ba sa estudyante natin yun? That is another matter. ba? So, kung sa point of view natin, clear sa atin, dapat ma magawa din natin tingnan yung design natin and communication natin from the perspective of the recipient. Naiintindihan ba talaga nila? So, we have to be able to communicate these, all of these things to our students very clearly and precisely. So, paano? kung hindi tayo face-to-face. -face. Sa face-to-face -face kasi madali eh. Kaya I think medyo merong parang feeling of, um, parang feeling of uh, overwhelm, yung na-overwhelm tayo, yung overwhelming feeling na yung thought na mag-shift tayo sa online. Kasi uh, sa classroom, lahat ng nasa utak natin, pwede natin i-communicate verbally. And... Uh, uh, I think part of our culture is very oral. I mean, verbal. Okay? <laughs> Yung tradition natin, even before, I or uh, verbal. Um, so, pagdating sa distance learning and online learning, we have to practice yung written. Um, pwede pa rin naman tayong mag-verbal instruction, i-record natin o mag-video tayo, pero we have to take into account na may iba't ibang learners tayo. May mga learners na maaaring hindi capable of hearing or uh, 
So, hindi nila maririnig yung instructions ninyo. So, kung gusto natin maging inclusive and accessible ang ating uh, courses, so, kailangan meron kang text-based um, counterpart. Uh, moreover, maliban doon, um, kapag text kasi, madaling himayin ng estudyante kasi nakikita niya. So, nakikita niya yung instruction, hindi lang naririnig. So, mahihimay niya yun, tapos ma-analyze ma niya, makakapag-strategize siya based sa kung ano yung nabasa niya. So, mahihimay niya, ma-analyze niya yung instructions mo. Uh, kaya sa online and distance learning, it is important that we also write down uh, our instructions very clearly and explicitly. No? So, kaya siguro, important din nyo na ma-develop yun kapag nag-develop kayo ng course package ninyo when you deliver your courses online or kung gagawin yung modular yan, na practice nyo talaga na lahat ng instructions ninyo up to the tiniest detail ay naandoon sa um, uh, guides ninyo at saka package ninyo. So, next is... Um, Objectivity and independence. So, fourth. So, administration of assessments and interpretation of the result, results should be objective and independent of any influence. So, um, I guess this is very straight to the point naman, di ba? Uh, we always try to practice objectivity. Kahit na halimbawa, sin, may magsabi sa atin na mahirap naman talagang maging fully objective, yes, but you have to provide yourself with the tools that will help you be objective, na mabawasan yung, yung, um, yung bias na, or subjectivity ng ating decisions kapag nagmamark tayo or nag -e evaluate tayo ng outputs. That's why it is important na may rubric tayo or may answer key tayo kung uh, na pinipreprepare it lessens the subjectivity in making decisions or uh, marking or rating our students' outputs. And it, uh, so independent of any influence. So regardless kung sino siya, yung estudyante natin, o kung ano man siya, uh, pipiringan mo yung mata mo. So same yung standard sa lahat ng estudyante. So a good assessment is, is also fair and ethical. So it is free. This is in line with objectivity and independence. It is free from bias and should observe equality, equity, and inclusivity. Okay? So lahat ito. Kaya uh, I think kailangan natin itong pag-isipan kung halimbawa pinag-iisipan ninyo na magdu-dual mode kayo. Kasi mag magiging mahirap ang equality, ang equity at inclusivity kung kung magdu-dual mode. Dahil definitely iba ang assessment methods ng purely ng purely print-based or offline at iba rin ang assessment methods ng mga online. Iba rin ang accessibility ng online sa accessibility ng offline. I mean, access sa resources, uh, definitely magkaiba. Uh, access sa uh, learning opportunities, magkaiba pa rin. Um, pwede natin sabihin kung iisipin natin, uh, mas madami talaga yung opportunities na makukuha ng mga may access sa online kesa doon sa mga walang access uh, sa internet. Kasi ang daming resources talaga online na magagamit ng mga estudyante to support their learning. So these are the things that you should think about kapag magdi-decide kayo whether to really do online or to do offline or print-based. Okay? Uh, next is transparency and accountability. So assessment should be open to evaluation and should be verifiable. Okay? So, um, tayo as teachers, we should also be open to evaluation. So, whether we do self-evaluation or we ask our peers to evaluate our assessment, that should be all right with us. Kasi every now and then, actually, hindi every now and then, we should consistently 
evaluate our assessments uh, and verify kung uh, uh, appropriate pa ba siya, reliable pa ba siya, valid pa ba siya. Uh, this will ensure uh, objectivity them and improve and uh, ensure them that our materials are are subject to um, to consistent improvement. Uh, oops, sorry. Okay, so we also must subject ourselves to evaluation and be open to criticisms. Okay, kasi wala namang masama na mag na ma-criticize. Actually, important mm. yun para mag-improve ka. Kasi kung ayaw mo ma-criticize, then paano ka mag improve di ba? Hindi naman lahat ng bagay nakikita natin on our own. Kaya importante na nakikinig din tayo doon sa nag-criticize. At hindi dapat natin um, sinaset aside o sinasantabi yung mga criticism na yun. Rather, we should be reflective on on those things. Okay? The same as yung mga skills na itinuturo din natin sa mga estudyante natin na gusto natin sila maging reflective. Ganun din tayo. Maging reflective din tayo. Importante ang professional um, uh, reflection. Okay? So number seven, timely feedback. Oh, ito mahirap to. Lalo na sa online. This is also based uh, on our experiences. Kasi... Um, um, kung mag-online tayo, mas one-on-one -on -one actually ang uh, pagtingin natin doon sa performance ng estudyante. Hindi na lang sila isang collective, isang grupo, na isang class. Uh, sa so online, mas makikita mo yung development ng estudyante mo isa-isa. Kasi nakikita mo yung output nila isa-isa. Eh, Kasi isa-isa din sila nagsasubmit. Uh, whether group work yan, we makikita mo pa rin yung performance ng estudyante kasi kapag na group work ka, you have to ask uh, for peer evaluation, di ba? So makikita mo yung performance ng estudyante. Pero kahit mahirap, we should always try as much as possible to provide feedback uh, on our students' works and outputs in a timely manner. Um, the extent and nature of the feedback that we give should be in line with the purpose and nature of the assessment. So, hindi ka magbibigay ng feedback na beyond naman doon sa hiningi mo o doon sa uh, within the scope ng assessment frame. So, nabanggit ko nga kanina, feedbacking can help our students uh, reflect on their work and on how they can improve their performance and how they could address their learning gaps. So, maganda, important yung feedback, kaya important yung timeliness um, kahit mahirap. Uh, nagawin kasi importante din may time factor yun eh the earlier na malaman ng estudyante na ito yung kailangan nilang i-improve na meron pala silang misconception o maling understanding dun sa concept the, the uh, faster then that, that they will be able to address these misconceptions kaso kung halimbawa uh, late na nabigay at the end na so nabigay mo na rin yung summative assessment mo so hindi na rin na na address ng students mo uh, yung learning gap na yun kung hindi nila na-discover on their own, di ba? So, may factor talaga yung um, timely feedback. Uh, ngayon, kung halimbawa hindi talaga natin maiwasan, malilate talaga siya, provide mo pa rin kahit late. Para uh, later on, kahit nandit siya, um, the students will still be able to think about Diba? What they need to do eventually. Okay. Number eight, efficiency and feasibility uh, and accessibility. So in designing assessments, we should also consider how we could balance learning needs and the limited time, resources, skills, and knowledge that uh, we as teachers have uh, to implement and mark the outputs. So, uh, therefore, teacher support is also important in assessment design and assessment implementation. So, siguro itong part na to, kailangan ng uh, support ng administration sa teachers. Kasi although uh, madaming magagandang assessment methods sa pwede nating ibigay, pero we have to work within the time frame that, that 
is provided to us. Because one SEM lang yan, dapat kayang gawin ng estudyante yung summative assessment mo within the the term. Um, kung halimbawa, formative assessment yan, edi kung ano lang yung allowable time. And there, um, we have to consider din yung resources natin. So, ano ba yung mga materials sa pwede natin gamitin o yung mga estudyante? Ano ba yung mga kaya lang nilang gamitin uh, mater materials or devices or equipment? At ano din ba yung skills ng teacher? And at the same time, yung student. So, kung halimbawa, kung... Um, magkakaroon tayo ng platform for online quizzes, maganda sana yung online quizzes kasi auto, pwede natin automate ang feedback. Uh, instantaneous ang feedback ng estudyante na mag-receive. Uh, pero hindi pa ganun ka um, um, ka-develop ang, ang technological skills ng teachers, then um, the institution should be able to support the teacher in providing them with the assistance that they need in order to um, uh, implement uh, online quizzes, for example. No? Uh, next is the range of methods and approaches. So, I, sorry. Okay. so it is also a good practice. Okay. It's also a good practice to use multiple assessment mm. methods to provide students with multiple learning opportunities and chances to demonstrate their knowledge and skills. So, wag lang tayo masatisfy sa isang klase ng assessment. Kung traditional lang yan. Uh, we should challenge ourselves in providing alternative forms and authentic forms of assessment. Um, uh, para din mabigyan mo ng mas madaming opportunities to learn new studyante. He, one size doesn't fit all. So, um, the more... At uh, we have to remember then that the different learning, uh, different assessment methods, may tina target din siya na kanya kanyang um, learning objectives and target skills. So the more varied your um, assessment methods, malam mas malami ding skills ang nakikita mo na may measure mo at the same time na develop among your students. No, at the same time, yung var variety at yung range ng assessment methods mo will also increase the validity of your judgment. Kasi mas madami kang um, information na nakuha eh. Madami kang data na nagather from different forms of assessments that you, po, that you provided the students. So mas madami kang data. The more data that you have, edi mas magiging valid and reliable din ang iyong judgment of the student's performance. Kasi mas makikita mo siya ng buo. Hindi lang isang aspeto ng pagkatuto niya makikita mo. Hindi lang yung knowledge niya. Makikita mo rin, niya yung, makikita mo rin yung capacity niya, yung, uh, yung capability niya to apply the knowledge or to make something out of the, the concept that uh, they learn. Diba? Kung makakapag-create sila ng something out from it. Okay? So here are some of the assessments in... Um, open and distance e-learning mode. So, yung nga nabanggit ko kanina, online quizzes, so for formative assessment methods, yung mga low stakes na assessment, pwede yung mga short online quizzes. Actually, yung mga online quizzes, pwede natin yung gamitin for self-assessment na lang ng estudyante. So, i-check nila, self-check. Uh, meron silang resource na binasa o inaral. Uh, may mga ginawa silang... Activity, sige nga, tingnan nga natin how much have you learned. So may, may mga short online quizzes ka na instantaneous ang um, feedback kasi naka-embed na kung ano yung mga right answers, paano nila hahanapin yung right answer in case mali yung sagot nila. So yan, isang, um, isang assessment uh, tool yung online quiz. Uh, discussion forums, yan, common din yan sa online learning. So uh, usually asynchronous. So may discussion question si teacher, tapos sasagot si estudyante. Uh, hindi sabay-sabay. Pero at the same time, dahil may hindi ka, hindi ka restricted na sagot ninto at this particular time, yung students may enough time siya to really think about the question and reflect on it and reflect on their answers before posting them. No? So ang maganda sa discussion forum, uh, lahat ng estudyante, makikita kung magpa-participate sila. Uh, makikita mo kung 
uh, yung level of understanding ng estudyante. Uh, tapos, unlike sa face-to-face na yung estudyante, most of the time, di ba, may discussion, pwede siyang, ma- pwede matapos yung isang session na hindi naman siya nagsasalita. Sa discussion forum, hindi. Kasi kailangan nila talaga mag-participate for them to earn a grade or, uh, ka- kas- or for them to complete the course. So, yan. So, another is yung reflective blogs or e-journal. So, ito, pwede ito sa assessment as learning. So, re- uh, dito, the students, ka- madaming ways on how you can um, utilize reflective blogs. Eh. Pwede free write. The students will just write whatever um, they have learned or uh, whatever their insights are um, in connection to the topic. Or you provide guide questions. Pwede rin combined. No? Meron kang a general question, tapos, pero free naman sila on how they will write their, their entries. Tapos sa reflective blogs or e-journals, pwede itong open sa lahat ng estudyante na pwede nilang i-check yung mga journals sa mga kaklase nila. So meron din silang peer interaction. No? Nakakatulong din yan para maging mas reach yung uh, learning ng estudyante. So, meron ding e-portfolio. So, makikita dyan lahat ng uh, outputs ng estudyante and the students get to reflect on their progress based on their outputs. Uh, evidence din yan of their development and, uh, and growth in the course. So, tests or examinations, pwedeng online, pwedeng hindi, depende sa kung uh, paano nyo i-administer. And academic papers, so pwede yan written or type written, computerized, and then submitted. Uh, kung meron na kayong learning management system, pwede yung isubmit sa uh, LMS ninyo. Uh, I think nabanggit to ni Sir Rabahante before na mas maganda na uh, isasubmit siya sa LMS talaga. Huwag sa email. Huwag niyo ipapasend via email kasi may tendency na ma-flood yung email ninyo and then some of these papers or outputs get lost. Tapos mahirap na siya i-trace sometimes or mahirap di i-verify kung nagsubmit nga ba yung estudyante kapag nag-claim sila na nagsubmit sila. So another form of assessment that you can use uh, in your online learning courses is the wikis. So yung wikis is a collaboration, collaboration tool or collaborative tool Uh, ito yung example niya. So parang Wikipedia, di ba sa Wikipedia, anyone can edit, provide uh, additional information. So nakikreate yung buong, um, buong discussion uh, from the contribution of different um, people. So pwede yan sa classroom ninyo. For example, to cell biology. So yung nagbuo ng content nito, mga estudyante. Ba? So, pwede nyo pagawa yan sa mga estudyante ninyo. Yan. So, isang example yan. Okay. So, pwede rin itong web quest. So, ang web quest naman is a problem-solving learning activity. So, yan. So, pwede siyang collaborative din, group work, or pwede rin individual. So, meron kang, yan. So, may several tasks that the students need to do in order to solve a problem. So, meron kang problem na ipapasolve. Tapos, to arrive uh, at the solution, you you ask them to do several tasks. So, yeah. So, this is one of the... This is, this is an example of a web quest. No? So, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so other forms, yung mga collaborative activities, hindi ibig sabihin na online tayo, hindi tayo pwede magpag-group work. Actually, kayang-kayang magpag-group work. Siguro yun yung isa sa affordance ng, ano, ng online, yung interactivity. Interactivity ng students with the content, interactivity ng students with their peers, interaction with their peers, interaction with you. ba? Diba? So, hindi nga lang... Um, hindi nga lang siya uh, real-time minsan, pero nandoon, di ba? Uh, 
may advantage and disadvantage yung hindi real time pero kung maiisipin mo with a synchronous nature nagbibigay mo din nakakapagbigay ka din opportunity for the individuals to really reflect on um, the topic or the, the discussion points or the subject matter no so peer assessments pwede din yung gawin so gawa ka lang ng tool for them to use para mag-guide yung mga estudyante mo to assess uh, their classmates work yeah. and performance assessments so this is a type of alternative assessment where the students are able to demonstrate their knowledge and skills as well as their competencies by performing a task or producing an output. So, ah, ito ang isang example niya. So, performance, gagawin mo talaga. So, pag sinabing evaluate, you will evaluate. May problem kang uh, isosolve. Uh, kung problem-solving skills, may, may problem kang isosolve. So, ito, isang repository samples ng mga different assessments. So, may pang basic ed, pero meron din pang higher level. So, isang example ito. So, ito isang example. Ah, sorry. Wait. Not this one. Ito, yung assessment. So, see, this is a problem-solving um, assessment. So, the students are given data that they will have to in interpret, analyze. So, tina mo. So, nagbigay ng data. So, binibuild niya yung skills. Kasi sa samula, tina mo. Pinapadescribe muna. Then, interpretation. And then, based on the, on the data, magsasuggest sila ng recommendation. So, kung makikita natin dito sa assessment type na to, no, yung skills para makarating to make a recommendation based on the, on the data, ay dinidevelop din. Kasi yung una, description, then interpretation, then you have to formulate a recommendation, which is uh, nasa ang level na siya ng Bloom's taxonomy. Nasa create part na siya, di ba? Synthesis. So, mataas na level na siya ng, ng thinking skills. So, you can do this then with your course. With, uh, pwedeng nasa isang assessment or with the different types of assessment that you provide you are building the knowledge and the skills that the students need in order to be really successful in the course and to really achieve your highest level of um, skills cognitive skills uh, that is indicated or set in your course no so nasa design mo yan kaya nga sa online and distance learning bulk of our work is concentrated in the design part. Very important ang design part. Kasi uh, yung during the the lesson kasi, uh, wala na kasing face-to-face -face, eh, na during. Ang during natin yung administration na nung course. So self-paced na yan uh, according na sa time ng estudyante. So ang, ang gagawin, ang part na yon nandun na sa student side, inaaral na niya yung package mo. So, lahat ng teaching mo na andoon sa package mo. Kaya, importante yung design mo ng package mo. No? So, how systematic and organizer package is. At kung paano rin nakatahi lahat ng elements as we discussed early on. Okay? So, now, how do we design assessments? So, kanina... Magandang isipin natin, o lagi natin tandaan yung constructive alignment. Kasi i-reiterate natin yan dito sa UBD or the uh, Understanding by Design Framework, uh, we're in, tinatawag din itong backward design. So, kagaya na nabanggit natin kanina, even do sa steps, lagi ang starting point ay yung learning outcomes, yung desired results. So, you need to have a clear understanding what you want your students to achieve. Okay? So, yung acceptable evidence, ito naman yung information, tapos yung mga learning experience. Same lang to kanina dun sa constructive alignment. Okay. So, uh, how would one know the appropriate assessment method to choose? Edy, the, sa, all, ganito, sabi ko nga kanina, ang guia natin, ang lighthouse natin ay ang ating learning objectives. So, you go back to the goal that you set, to the learning objectives. Okay? 
okay, kasi your learning objective will tell you kung ano yung kind of assessment that you will do. So there are no formulas or hard and fast rules. However, there are guys, guides which, which can help you determine the appropriate methods to use for your assessment. So kung titignan na natin dito, ito, um, ano lang to, um, general guideline or general guide. Uh, if a learning goal requires the student to know and recall, so usually traditional assessments to, quizzes, tests, essays, uh, short answer quizzes, multiple choice, yan. Uh, but if the learning goal requires the students to know and do, then combination siya na traditional and performance assessments. Kasi may do part kay. So it's imperative that the students are really performing the skills. Kasi there's no way for you to know if the students are really capable of performing that skills uh, or applying the concepts without them really demonstrating the skill or without them really applying the concepts. So, dapat meron kang performance-based assessment. And if the learning goal requires the students to understand big ideas, uh, performance assessments to. Kasi there's no way for you to know. Kailangan talagang um, ipakita nila yan. So, enduring understandings are synonymous with desired understandings. Ano ba yung mga gusto mo talagang matuto, matutunan ng mga studyante uh, at the conclusion of the course. Okay? So, ito yung isang um, matrix that you can use uh, to help you map out your assessment methods and check the alignment of your instruction. So, kung makikita mo dito, kita pala dito. Okay. So, yung learning objectives, yung assessment methods. So, ito usually the summative assessment to kasi demonstrate yung achievement of the learning objectives. And the learning activities, ito yung mga formative assessment mo or assessment for learning mo at the same time, assessment as learning. Dito mo yun ilalagay. And then, yeah, alignment with the program or course learning goal. So, dito. For example lang ito, ito yung program goal, curriculum goal ng uh, program ninyo. And then, ito yung learning objective ng isang unit o ng isang course. Yeah. So, differentiation of cells. So, pwede i-build mo yung knowledge by studying resources, online quizzes para makita kung ano yung mga parts of the cells, types of the cells, ganyan. Cell simulation, so para makita nila. Uh, tapos, again, diagram para ma-differentiate, ganyan. Tapos, so na-build mo na yung content knowledge nila uh, at the same time yung skills nila in differentiating, pwede ka na mabigay ng problem for them um, uh, to solve using the knowledge that you have, uh, that they supposedly have developed, as well as the skills that they have gained uh, during the instruction. So, yan. So, pwede natin to i-visit, pero siguro later on na lang, no? Um, kasi may time, kailangan pa ni Ma'am Cha mag-present sa inyo ng mga, um, o, oh, ang haba ko na, sanali na lang to. Um, so, ito yung mga links for simulation, virtual labs, and other online resources sa pwede nyong kunin. So, yan. Uh, important din na sana gumamit tayo ng mga open educational resources uh, para din ma-address yung copyright issues. No? So, so, madami yung mga repositories. Ito yung isang example ng repositories. Yan, pwede nyong i-check out yung mga yan. Open yan. So, ibig sabihin, pwede nyo siyang magamit at no cost. Uh, pero, meron siyang mga um, licenses. So, hang hanggang saan lang ninyo pwede gamitin. So, pwede nyo free to use, pero pwede nyo bang i-modify? Yan. Uh, sa atin siguro naman, hindi, dahil tayo naman yung nasa State University, hindi naman natin siguro bibenta yan for commercial purposes, di ba? Pero siguro, um, yan. So, may mga licenses sa attribution lang, okay na. No? Isight mo lang siya. Tapos, o kaya merong iba na uh, pag kinuha mo yon isi-share mo din yung output na ginawa mo using that. Ano? So, ito, may non-commercial, hindi pwedeng ibenta. Yun. So, madami yan. So, kapag nakita niya CC, Creative Commons Licenses, ibig sabihin, 
uh, ano yan, open educational resource. Pwede mo siyang gamitin, free to use. Pwede mong integrate sa courses mo. Pwede mong gamitin, free. Kailangan mo lang isite or depende doon sa kung ano ang uh, restriction na binigay doon sa license nila. Okay? Okay. So ngayon, how to design the performance task? Kasi tinatanong natin kung uh, yung mga performance assessments that target um, uh, higher thinking skills. So, yon. First, you need to identify the relevant task. So, kung ano yung mga actual performance na kailangan mo, na gusto mo ipagawa sa estudyante mo. And then, you have to determine the assessment uh, uh, focus. So, whether process or product ba yan or both. So, kung whether ang i-assess mo ay yung proseso ng paggawa ng estudyante o yung output mismo nila, pwede din namang pareho. No? Then you have to communicate and with this, all of this with the students. So, paano? Paano? Okay? So, merong framework that we could use. So, for I, for writing the performance task, uh, pwede natin, natin sundin tong framework na to or yung guide na to. So, first, identify your goal. Ano ba yung goal ng um, assessment? Are they being required to design, to create, to solve, ba? to propose? Yun. Pero anong role nila? So, sa paggawa nila noong task na yon, anong role nila? Anong job nila? Uh, sila ba ay scientists, um, investigator, or biologist, agriculturist, chemist? Um, and then, who are the intended um, audience? So, sino ba supposedly? Scenario lang to ah, so pwedeng hindi totoo. Pwede ring totoo, depende sa inyo, no? So who are the intended clients or the stakeholders or the recipients of the output? And then what is the situation? Okay, so ano yung problem or yung task? And then, so ano yung product or performance? So you specify. And then the standards and criteria that they that will be used to assess their performance or product or both. So, yeah. So, ngayon, sabi natin, we need to communicate. So, how do we communicate all of this to our students? By writing an assessment guide. So, ito yung mga components ng assessment guide. So, yung submission date. So, the date kung kailan they need to submit their output. And then, the task. So, ito yung sa grasp kanina. So, dyan natin isusulat yung performance task nila. And then, kung meron kang specific instructions, yan, and procedures and specific guidelines or reminders, dyan yun, so procedures or specific guidelines. And then, the evaluation criteria. So, you can also include yung percentage para aware sila gano'n ba kalaki uh, ito sa final grade nila. And then, kung kailangan ng definition of terms at saka mga resources pang kailangan, yan. So, ito isang example ng assignment guide. Um, ay, sorry. Dali lang. So, ito assignment guide ko to sa health education class ko. So, ito yung submission date. Ito yung laki, percentage equivalent of final grade. So, nilagay ko din yung purpose of the assignment kasi, di ba, sinasabi natin, uh, we should uh, specify yung goal. Bakit kailangan nila gawin? And then, this is the task. So, yung, yung role. So, ano yung gagawin nila? Uh, conduct the first phase of the planning. Uh, health uh, first phase of planning health education program. So, yan. Then, the specific guidelines. Okay, yan. So, yun. Then, the submission guidelines, kung paano nila isasubmit, importante yan. Kasi, hindi lang natin dapat iniisip kung ano yung papagawa natin, paano din nila ibibigay sa atin isasubmit. ba? So, yan. At saka yung assessment rubric. So, ito naman yung assessment rubric. So, yeah. so, binibigay din namin yan sa estudyante doon sa course site. So, maa-access nila yan lahat. Kumpleto kasama yung buong course package. 
So ako, ang, ang practice ko as much as possible, sa so simula pa lang ng klase, um, alam na nila kung ano yung assignment nila na gagawin at saka final requirement nila para makapag-prepare na sila early on. Papace na nila yung um, studies nila. Okay? So, siguro mag-end na muna ako dito to give way to Ma'am Cha para mas um, mapa, mas makonkretize ni Ma'am Cha kung ano yung mga prinsipo sa binanggit ko dito. So, I'll give it to you, Ma'am Cha. Thank you, Prof. That was uh, very comprehensive. Uh, thank you. So, uh, I'll pick up from where Roja uh, left. So, my task for this morning, by the way, good morning po sa lahat. And um, I'm very glad that you're able to join us this morning. The second half of this presentation is in um, connection with some examples and some practices that we implement at UP Open University uh, in terms of assessments for our science courses. Um, as Roja mentioned earlier, the assessment part is really part of the design of your course. So, magsisimula tayo sa course coverage, pipili ka ng modules na, or units na i-deliver mo online, and then you thresh out the learning objectives, provide learning resources, and then you design learning activities. La the last part is the assessment. So, when you think about your courses, you have to think from the learning objectives hanggang assessment ang up to providing feedback. And we should be providing our students enough scaffold so that they reach the desired learning objectives for a particular unit. So you may mga task tayo na inilalagay in between the lowest form of um, assess, lowest level of assessment up to the highest level of assessment, to yung ideal. Uh, that's why when we think about online uh, or distance education, uh, much of our time as teachers will really be focused on sitting down and thinking about how will I deliver this? What is the best uh, approach to this given the context of my students? Mahalaga na pag-iisipan mo talaga ano yung meron yung studyante ko, ano yung meron ako, ano yung kaya kong ibigay sa kanila, ano yung kaya nilang gawin based sa lahat ng ito. So uh, it is important for us to sit down and think about um, these things before you even uh, go into online mode. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I, I have taught nine years at the Institute of Chemistry in UP Los Banos, where I handled analytical chemistry, uh, both quantitative, uh, both the traditional analytical chemistry to um, the mod modern instrumentation, and then ganun din sa organic chem. Uh, for some time, nagturo din ako ng gen chem, so yun yung background ko. Um, between the face-to-face -to, -face to the online distance um, stint, online or distance education stint ko, it was just a matter of like four, four or six weeks. So very sudden shift from um, the traditional mode to uh, distance ed mode and I did not have actually the time the luxury of time to think about how am I going to transform everything so my first question to myself really was number one how would I do chemistry online and number two how would I test uh, my students learning in uh, the online setting so ang ginawa ko talaga ay kinompare ko kung ano ba yung requirement na ginagawa ko dati sa traditional mode at inisip ko, ano din ba yung requirement ko dapat sa online and distance ed? And as you can see, the list here provides us an idea that they should be the same. I mean, uh, non, non, um, hindi pwedeng masacrifice yung quantity or quality ng assessment methods mo kapag nagpunta ka na sa online or distance ed. So I still had, uh, I still had to make sure there are quizzes, uh, there are long exams, because uh, I, I handled lecture lecture classes before. I used to have quizzes from time to time. And then I have four long exams throughout the semester and then one final exam at the end. Uh, in my laboratory classes, ganun din, kasi prescribed yung laboratory classes namin, departmental yun doon. Um, we have some form of pre-lab quizzes. We ask them to submit pre-lab reports, mayroong lab reports 
uh, lab performance, meron din written post lab report in the end. So I have to translate all of those on, online and distance ed. The question was then how? So uh, what matters here at this point is that I knew that the quantity and quality of my uh, quizzes, long exams, final exam, and the laboratory assessment should be the same when I shifted to online and distance ed. So how are they different? Um, first thing is that the venue and time are definitely not the same. So of course, the venue, magkakasama kayo sa face-to-face. -face. Pagdating sa online, hindi ko na yung kinonsider kasi sa OU, asynchronous ang mode ng teaching ko sa OU. So hindi ako nagsisynchronous ever. Dahil alam ko na may differences yung time zones namin ng mga students ko. Tapos uh, most of our students are are actually working students. So we, we're not sure whether at a particular time we will all be available. So I've, I've actually opted for asynchronous from day one of my teaching at UTOU. There's also differences in terms of mediums. Med medium and tools I use for my assessment. So dati, um, meron lang ako ay pen and paper, i-risograph ko lang yun, i-reproduce ng 100 copies, and then i-distribute, sabay-sabay silang mag-e-exam uh, from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. in one venue. Uh, hindi na rin yun possible ngayon. And then the form of output that we get from our students were used to be uh, answer sheets or answer keys after the one and a half hour session. When I shifted to online, what I did was to just make sure that, number one, ma the assessment will be accessible over a certain period of time that's reasonable. At the same time, I have to make sure that the integrity of the exam is protected. So, diniscuss, uh, bahagya ni uh, Prof. Roja yung um, ilang methods doon, babalikan ko yung mamaya pa isa, -isa. Okay. Um, kung dati pa ng paper, ngayon, lahat ng tools ko, pag sa assessment, nasa loob na ng platform. So, uh, but the philosophy remains the same. All students should be within the same physical venue. When I shifted to online and distance ed, all students should be within the same virtual space. Kaya mahalaga sa amin, sa akin, mahalaga sa akin ng virtual uh, elements, ang learning management system, na lahat ng students ko dapat nandun sa loob lang ng isang learning management system. And for us, that's Moodle. So I want all my students to do their assessment task within Moodle because Moodle, um, have, Moodle has so many affordances that allows the assurance of integrity. That's one convenience on my part. And of course, accessibility on the part of the student. Um, so when it it used to be that pen and paper yung output. Ngayon, hindi na lang basta pen and paper, hindi na lang din basta quiz lang. Ang ginagawa nila, may higher level pa ng skills na required sa students. Um, bukod dun sa obvious na reasons, ay obvious na features na magkaiba o magkatulad sila, yung isang nakita ko na difference or similarity ng assessment sa face-to-face -face at saka sa DE or sa online mode, uh, number one, there's an increased opportunity for assessment for learning. So nabanggit ni Roja kanina yung assessment for learning. Uh, you give, uh, we provide our students the avenue to learn further through the assessments. At nagagawa ng mas madalas yon sa online sa palagay ko. Bakit? Ang example ni Roja kanina ay yung small quizzes natin during lecture. Ang idea kasi, every lecture, every one and a half hour session nyo, sana magkaroon ng quiz, di ba? But oh my God, kung meron kang 100 na student, tapos kahit five items lang yung quiz mo, that's 100, one-fourth sheet of bad papers. That you have to check every meeting twice a week. So imagine the volume of work that you'll have to do. I honestly couldn't keep up with that. Dati nagpapa-quiz lang ako, kunwari, para papasok sila. Pero ang daming chachikan nun towards the end of the semester, nagchachik ka na nga ng lecture exam, final exam, tapos meron ka pang gabundok na quizzes na kailangan chikan. So, kahit pa paano, nung nag-shift ako sa DE, mas na-promote yung assessment for learning because I can make my quizzes automated. That's one good thing of it. So, students are not um, stressed about it anyway because, number one, we emphasize that the purpose of such activities is for them to check in on their learning. That's one. Number two, it's just a five-item quiz. will not hurt them 
to you know spend five minutes or so just to answer a five item quiz that in the end um, will be automatically graded. So by the by the end of the five minutes, they will already know how far uh, they've gone in terms of their learning. So that opportunity for them to check their own progress is very important whenever we do um, online and distance ed for sciences because we cannot, I mean, for the life of us, how can we monitor 100 students all at the same time within a, uh, in, in an LMS? That's the ideal situation. So we take advantage of the tools that uh, Moodle or the LMS provides for us. So that's one. Um, the opportunities for assessment of learning is definitely the same. So if before we use assessment to gauge the student's achievement, that's what um, Professor Roja was um, discussing earlier, when you shift to science, uh, so to online science courses, that's also the same. So the, there's an equal opportunity for assessment of learning. And more importantly, Roja highlighted this uh, earlier, no? Sabi niya, dapat meron talagang opportunities for assessment as learning. Uh, we provide our students that opportunity to gauge their own learning, assess their own, and reflect on their own learning. So, kasi dun palang magkakaroon ng meaningful learning yung student. Pag naiisip niya na by himself or by herself, nasaan na nga ba ako at this point? So there are many uh, affordances that ngayon ko lang din na-discover nung nagtuturo na ako online. Dati hindi ko yan ginagawa. Wala akong pakialam kung nagre-reflect yung student ko. Ang mahalaga sa akin, hindi ko kakantahin yung um, just once. Yung, as a teacher, I did my best, but I guess my best wasn't good enough towards the end of the semester. Parang hukulaan mo na napagod ka na isang sem, hindi mo alam kung nasaan yung estudyante mo o sige, nagpapalecture exam ka. Pero the uh, finer the details or the finer the time frame, the smaller the time frame that you can evaluate them, the better. And with online platforms, you can actually do that even if you have more than 100 students at a time. So, uh, example nito, I, for, uh, for example, if I'd like to test their prior knowledge before we go to the next topic, so I can actually give them um, a small small quizzes. So at the end or, or at the beginning of every module or topic or week, I provide them some questions, say five to ten items for good for five minutes or some one minute papers just to ask them at uh, just to ask them about which topic do they find most challenging so far. This can be graded or assessed or not. It's up to you. That's how, um, that depends on how you design your course. Ako kasi, nagpo-provide ako ng mga uh, unassessed quizzes, but I also give them uh, assessed quizzes and they know which ones are assessed and which ones are, are not. So uh, I make sure that these kinds of quizzes are low stakes assessment. And I use this actually to ease them in towards the first lecture exam. So kailangan mo kasi silang sanayin mag-exam online. So magbibigay ako ng napakaraming quizzes at the beginning, short lang naman. Um, short lang naman yung mga yon. Pero ang mahalaga sa akin, constant yung exercise nila using Moodle. So at the first long exam, which is a high stake exam for them, they are already comfortable with the platform. That's why um, mahalaga sa akin na nasa isang platform lang kami. And really, for our purposes at OU, Moodle has already served um, good, has already served us uh, to, to the fullest capacity na kaya din namin intindihin. So, uh, marami na siyang na-provide sa amin na scaffolds para magawa itong mga to. Hindi ko po pinopromote yung Moodle kasi hindi naman para stakeholder doon. Pero dahil nakita na namin yung mga kayang gawin ng Moodle, um, yun yung, yun din sana yung uh, makita ninyo. At itong mga examples namin, uh, lahat to based sa model. So, anyway. So, this is an example of that. When I taught organic chemistry, hindi ko alam paano ko gagawin tong mga mechanisms. So, basic organic chemistry, for example, deals with so many of the mechanisms and so many of the reactions. But in fact, uh, when I redesign my questions, these are still assessment questions on mechanistic um, organic reaction. So, meron pa rin siyang ganung touch. And um, as you can see, very low-level questions lang tong mga to. What? Identify? Um, because they are, this is part of a quiz, of the fir very first quiz they will have. So, 
we give our students opportunity to ease in, uh, ease themselves in the course and in the platform. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, sa residential face-to-face uh, -face classes ko dati, gusto gusto ko talaga yung mga questions ng hybridization, for example, by providing them context, uh, examples within context. So, I give them uh, compounds that they'd be interested in. So, I actually can shift all those questions into Moodle um, to allow them to have that exercise on number one, ito kasi yung problem na to, this is actually a question on hybridization and bonding. So uh, I asked them not only the hybridization of atoms labeled CA and on the second follow-up question, I asked them the types of bonds that are um, involved in um, atoms, uh, in bonds one, two, three, and four. So as you can see, I did not begin from scratch. I invested so much of my time in creating um, assessments in my face-to-face. -face. Ginamit ko yung mga assessments na yun. There's just a little bit of conversion that need to be done. Pero hindi pa rin ganun kalaki yung effort. Is, yun nga lang, medyo mahabang panahon yung ginugol ko para lang isipin, paano ko nga ba i-convert ito from a paper-based to an LMS-based exam? So, yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier that I just don't rely on assessed quizzes. I have so many unassessed quizzes. At dahil hindi naman kaya ng energy namin na gumawa ng napakaraming quizzes, bakit hindi, nyo, bakit hindi ko nalang gamitin yung mga available online? After all, there's just so many interactive quizzes online. One of the important aspects of assessment is feedback. Okay? So, Imagine mo gumagawa ka ng quizzes tapos meron kang feedback. Kung yan ay online quiz, immediate ang feedback. So after the after the student has taken the has attempted the quiz, the student will be able to view the feedback. However, that feedback mechanism need to be set up. At medyo laborious siya kasi syempre gusto mong bigyan ng feedback yung estudyante kung tama siya. Gusto mo rin naman siyang bigyan ng feedback kung mali siya. Mas mahalaga yung bigyan mo siya ng feedback kung mali siya. That's assessment for learning. So, kaya lang kung sobrang dami ng quizzes mo sa loob ng 12 or 16 week semester, that will take so much of your time. Um, what I'm trying to point out here is that there are so many similar types of online quizzes that's available online, freely available online, that provide students with feedback, immediate feedback, um, in the same manner as the one provided by Moodle. But of course, these ones are not assessed kasi ginagawa nila to outside the LMS. Uh, so, pero ang mahalaga dito, nakakapag-practice sila, nagkakaroon sila ng opportunity malaman na hindi ko pa pala naintindihan to kahit anong gawin ko, bakit ko mali. Kahit wala kayo doon, pag ang estudyante, natutunan niyang mag-aral by himself, natutunan niyang ma-realize na hindi ko pa pala to alam. Actually, they have that capacity to learn on their own. Um, well, I have faith in, in our students that they can reach that point wherein they can realize they need and they can study on their own. So we provide avenues and scaffolds for them so that they can reach that level. Um, Yung usual question na nare-receive ko, paano ako nagpapa-exam? I mean, like, ang chem ay 70% math. Well, baka magalit sa akin yung katagay itong parts ng chem. Pero mga tinuro ko, 70 to 80% math. If na, kung walang math yung mga courses ko, baka kaya yung discussion forum na activity siguro. Pero hindi eh, yung, yung chemistry na tinuturo ko, heavily um, based on math. So, I have to assess their problem-solving skills. Um, Siyempre, kasama dyan yung mathematical problem-solving skills nila, yung analytical skills nila. And I need to spread this from the low, medium to high-stake assessment uh, task. Kasi kailangan masanay sila dun pa lang sa simula, tapos susunod na medyo mataas-taas na yung mga rin, small quizzes, tapos big quizzes, and then final exam. So, um, I have to train them to be able to do this online. What I do is I use numeric type of questions in Moodle. Bakit? Kasi the numeric 
But that module inside Moodle, the numeric type of questions, allow for checking of significant figures, um, allowing tolerances for errors in calculation. So may, may, may bibigay kang tolerance para tatanggapin pa rin ang, tatanggapin ng system kahit yung sagot ng sudyante lamang lang ng 0.01. So kunwari, 5.2 yung final answer talaga. Pero ang sinagot ng sudyante, 5.20. Kung strict na programming yon baka hindi natanggapin yung 5.20 pero hindi sa so model iaallow niya yung mga tolerances and um, allowances that depends on how you set up the question i also use wildcard question kasi yung isa sa mga issues natin sa online or issues nila hindi ko issue kasi okay lang sa akin bala sila di ba is cheating kasi naniniwala ako that students will actually cheat kung talagang magche-cheat siya kahit gaano kaganda yung system mo they will cheat uh, so ayoko nang i-stretch yung sarili ko dun sa fact na hindi. Gagwardahan ko itong exam na to, sisiguraduhin ko hindi sila mag-cheat. Hindi. I have set up um, features that will not allow them to cheat. So number one dyan is wildcard question. Ito yung example niya. So all of them will have the same generic question, but every time a student, a unique student, undertakes the quiz, the values of volume and pressure will change. So even if they know the answer, I mean the, the question, yeah, they can discuss it among themselves. Bala sila. Pero pag lumabas yung quiz sa kanila, hindi niya naman kayang hulaan yung final answer. The student still needs to know what kind of question, and what is the volume or what is the pressure. So how to calculate the, or how to determine the final answer based on logical um, problem solving skills. Yun pa rin yung hahanapin ko. After all, yun naman yung tinitest ko, di ba? That the student will be able to implement the gas law in a particular problem. So, sa Moodle, kaya to. So, that's one. Um, teachers are also worried that, you know, ma'am, eh, baka screenshot lang po nila yan, yung question na yan, tapos pasa niya sa classmate niya. Eh, ang mga exams ko sa Moodle ay good lang for either one and a half hours or two hours. That depends on the type of the exam. And although it is available for 24 hours to increase the equity, and accessibility for students who cannot access at a certain period of time. Never kung ginawa yun, naglock ko ng exam na one hour lang. Say, 9 to 10 lang in the morning, hindi ko po yung ginawa. Usually, ang ginagawa ko, 24 hours open yung exam kasi pwedeng mahina yung internet nila during the time na karamihan sa kanila pwede. So, sa, nakabukas lang yung exam na yan ng 24 hours, but the moment they click and access the exam, that's when one and a half hours will begin. So, Kung nakikita mo yung timer sa gilid ng exam mo, para ngayon, nakikita ko po yung timer, nagpapanik ako eh, na kailangan matapos ako by this time. Ganun din po yung student. So, because the exams are time, that actually prevents, uh, lessens their um, chance to cheat. Kasi bakit ko pa to i-screenshot at papasa sa classmate ko? Eh, baka hindi ko masubmit yung exam. Baka naman in the middle of the exam, maputulan ako kina kina screenshot submit parang unahin ko pa ba yung welfare nila before yung welfare ko so bukod doon yun nga um nagbibigay ako ng wild card questions it i i let the lms create um or select some values yes um i'm happy to know na sabi ni Mr. Johnny Miranda muda din kasi yung isi set up nila sa PSA kasi fan po kami ng muda ako pala um Grabe yung mga inalaw niya na affordances within the, uh, within the LMS. So, Roja mentioned earlier that there are some assessment guides. And these are some examples of the guides that I give my students. So, this is actually, uh, I'm not as detailed as Roja kasi chem naman yung course ko. Tsaka medyo computation talaga yung karamihan ng ginagawa ko. So, at automated yung exam ko. So, for example, um, they are given the instruction to access only the quiz, only if they are ready because the moment they access the quiz, the timer will begin. So, um, also, I have locked, I, I locked the long quiz such that they they first have to um, accomplish all the prior activities. So, babasahin muna niya yung module 7, 8, 7 and 8, tapos gagawin muna niya lahat ng practice set, lahat ng quizzes, lahat ng exercises, bago niya ma-access yung quiz. So, nilalock ko yung quiz such that restricted yung quiz until such time that all prior tasks and activities are completed. So, once they access the quiz, the quiz will, only, will need to be completed within um, 60 minutes. So, even if it's available for 24 hours, they only have 60 minutes to complete it once they can 
Um, also, they were binibigay ko tong instruction bago nila buksan yung quiz, no? Kukuha sila ng scientific calculator, magda-download ng same periodic table. I give them all of those uh, prior to the first exam. And then, an important aspect of what I usually do for my organic chem and for my um, courses that has calculation, that have calculation is um, for them to submit a scratch paper. That's basically their answer sheet. So, bakit kailangan ko yun? Kasi minsan nagbibigay naman po ako ng partial point. Um, yung mga nakalabas sa quizzes ay sa quiz mode ng, sa quiz feature ng Moodle, ano yun, uh, automatically um, na mamark say, five points for this particular question. Pero paano kung final answer lang yung mali? Pero tama yung solution. At one point, nagkamali lang siya. So I'm giving the student the opportunity to submit partial, uh, submit solution set so that I, get, I can get partial points out of that. So also, that will assure me that they really did the calculation. So they have 30 minutes upon completion of the exam to upload their solution set. So ano yun? Either scan, copy, or photograph of um, the solution set. So meron silang scratch paper sa tabi nila, pipicture na nila yun. Once na masubmit nila yung kanilang um, quiz, ia-upload naman nila yung sa Moodle. Um, so ito yung isang example yun. Uh, this is a topic in heats of reaction. So I ask them that I provide them simple questions like what is the color, what what type of apparatus they use to measure heat. Meron ding balance equation, balancing equation, the little gen chem, gen chem problem. Tapos meron calculation. So the questions for the, or the solutions for item C and D, I'll look for their, um, I will look for their solution set to see if I can give them partial point in case their final answer is wrong or is not the same as the one I expected them to have. Um, yung last na isang issue dito ay yung assessment of skills in application and performance. And this is basically an issue of laboratory. Uh, in the past, we measure it by doing laboratory performance or by laboratory skills. Um, ito yung mga sagot ko sa usual question nila sa akin sa panahon ngayon ng COVID na lahat ay biglang lumipat sa online mode. Parang anong gagawin natin sa lab siya? Parang ibinabalik ko sa kanila yung question. Ano ba yung role ng lab sa curriculum o sa course nyo? Are they meant to support the concepts delivered in the lecture? That's one. Or are they meant to teach the disciplinal skills? Because we deal with this problem in two ways. And that depends on how you think your laboratory or or how do you uh, how do you view the roles of laboratory in your curriculum. So pag-iisipan mo yun dapat. Para saan ba talaga yung lab ko? Kasi doon natin uh, targetin kung ano yung solution. So as I mentioned earlier, and Roja also emphasized this very well, that the learning objectives are the ones which will dictate the assessment and the feedback mechanism. So yung purpose ng lab ay... Kung ang purpose ng lab is to demonstrate the concept, medyo hindi ako masyadong worried doon, honestly. Kasi madaming ways para i-demonstrate yung, uh, i-demonstrate empirically yung theoretical concept. So if the laboratory is meant to support the lecture such that an empirical observation will be there, visible for the student to see the macro, macroscopic properties uh, and then relate that to microscopic properties. So kung yun lang din naman yung gusto mo, napakarami yan. Ito yung isang example na ginagawa ko uh, for intermolecular forces of lab, uh, intermolecular forces of attraction laboratory exercise. So this is actually a very short video that's available in YouTube. Um, by the way, Roja mentioned na kami ay resource-based course packages. Karamihan ng resources ko, kinukuha ko talaga sa web. Hindi pa ako gumagawa. Bakit? Kasi mas maganda pa po yung gawa nila kaysa dun sa gawa ko. So, but ako magsisimula, di ba? Yun yung philosophy ko eh. Parang, there's just uh, a volume of resources that's available online that's much better than than the ones I could uh, create. So I better use them. The thing is, we have to package those resources such that uh, learning will be facilitated. So ito yung example. Nang pinakage ko siya sa isang assessment activity. So it's a nine-minute video. Um, and it involves the following... Uh, Compound, so water, isopropyl alcohol, and glycerin. And in that video, we investigated the effect of IMFA in different um, uh, 
activities. So for example, yung pinakauna dyan ay yung uh, penny dra drops on penny coin test. So what is the behavior of each compound when they are dropped on in a penny? So for this particular activity, we ask our students to, I ask my students to record their observations. So very similar to laboratory to meron observation of art. And then they will record that. And then they will have to identify the IMFA based on that, how they will be counting the number of drops kasi dito eh. Ilang drops yung malalagay mo sa water bago siya mag-spill over the, the penny coin. Ilang drops yung may ilagay mo sa alcohol at ganun yung siglisirin. And then they'll have to explain. So in a way, this is a form of a lab report. So kung matatandaan, kung natatandaan ko, ganito rin halos yung uh, performa namin sa uh, residential. So in addition to the drops and penny test, meron pang ibang kasamang experiment doon. At meron din corresponding table for each of those um, in, in our um, assessment guide. So apat na table, bali lahat yun dahil may apat na experiment. Ngayon, kung ang problema natin ay uh, kung yung lab is to teach disciplinary skill. And we deal with this in two parts. Number one, um, we teach the skills, yeah, that should be fine. We can actually teach our, the skills remotely. And mainly because we are demonstrating the skills, these are heavily based on videos. Admittedly, uh, magre-rely ako for videos uh, in this case. Kasi dinidemo mo pa paano gagawin yung mga laboratory equipment, pa paano mag-set up ng ganito or ganyan, pa paano mag-analyze ng ganito or ganyan. Yung second aspect ng assessment, yun yung problema talaga sa ngayon, at least sa ngayon. Kasi we have to assess the skills that's part of your learning objective is for them to understand and to understand the use of and for them to perform the skill. So you have to check whether they can really perform it or not. So there are two things to do there. Number one, the lab report, of course, that's their writing skill. The second one is their lab performance. And for me, the question is whether or not we will assess the lab performance. Hindi yun yung question. Ang question lang dito is when and how. Um, as I mentioned to one of the institutions before, ang question lang dito, kailan kayang gawin ng student lab performance? Hindi question kung dapat ba nilang gawin? Or dapat bang i ipilit sa kanila to? Or dapat ko ba siyang ipush sa curriculum? Hindi. Kasi para sa akin yung lab, skills based siya. So I have to assess the skill. So it's not a matter of, it's no longer a matter of whether they will do the uh, lab performances and assessment, they will really have to do it. It's just a matter of doing it when and how. Um, well, I have suggestions um, to them before. The possible frameworks here is that um, we can either do a combination of flip classroom or station and station rotation. So I'm sure you've already heard what flip classroom is. A flip classroom, meron silang gagawin online, and then they will come to the classroom to perform the task. So the problem here is that hindi pa nga sila pwedeng pumasok, di ba? So walang assurance na makakapasok sila by August. Kaya ang um, sinadjust ko, suggestion lang naman po, something for you to reflect on is that we can give all the online tasks at the start of the semester up to say week 9 or week 10 of the semester. And then coming from week 10 to 14 or 10 to 16, then we will test the assessment through uh, rotation. So para hindi sila sabay-sabay, pwedeng i-schedule mo rotation. This, uh, this uh, batch of students will do this experiment, the other batch will do that. So that hindi sila sabay-sabay. Logistically speaking kasi, when all of the students will go in the classroom all at the same time, there will be a problematic case of social distancing, yung mga ganun po. Kaya ang, ang suggestion dyan, well, this is in the hopes of pwede ba nilang gawin later? Kaya ko bang uh, negotiable ba for me yung lab skills later ko na lang gagawin? Is it a possibility? It's actually up to your institution to decide on that matter. These are just possible suggestions. And I think ito lang yung paraan para ma-assess mo yung skill kasi hindi ko naman pwedeng pagawain ng experiment yung studyante sa bahay nila. Paano kung may mangyari? I'll be accountable to that, di ba? Uh, even if they are kitchen, kitchen labs, there's still a danger to it. And I don't want to risk my students. That's one. Number two, of course, they are kitchen labs. The accuracy and precision of such skills is not comparable to the disciplinary skills that I want my students to achieve. 
by the end of the semester. So I still prefer them to come over to class. Yung nga lang, we want to observe all the precautions, safety precautions that are required at this point. Then baka pwedeng i-delay lang ang lahat. Yun lang yung iniisip ko na. Sige, on the first um, nine weeks, lahat ng exercises, merong lab report, merong ganito, merong ganyan, tuturo yung skills. Pero on weeks uh, 9 to 12, ang gagawin lang talaga namin ay intensive practice lang ng paggamit ng ganito. Kasi iba pa rin yung nakita nila sa video, iba din yung hinahawakan nila siya. So you give them opportunity to get used to the equipment by hand rather than just by seeing it. So three to four weeks of that would be good. And then doon ka mag evaluate um, after two weeks. Itetest mo ngayon kung natutunan nila yun. So kung familiar kayo sa move exam, that's one possible way of doing it. Yung move exam, yung mga, may kanya-kanyang station, tas yung student nag-ship lang from one station to another. And for each station, there's one particular laboratory skill being tested. So that's one um, option for that. So uh, ito yung isang example ng exercise na pwedeng gawin. So these three videos, is uh, the combination of the following three videos will teach how simple distillation will be done, how fractional distillation is, uh, uh, the applications of fractional distillation, and of course, one real experiment on the steam distillation of lemon scent from lemon peelings. So, uh, maridemo niya yung skills, magkakaroon kayo ng sensible experiment. Ang wala lang talaga dito lab performance, which by the end of the semester, you can actually do by demonstrating them, actually, this is how it is done and then assess the skill later. So marami pong salamat sa mga audience namin ngayon. We will entertain questions, pero gusto ko lang pong uh, pasalamatan ng Office of Academic Support and Instructional Services or ang OASIS led by Prof. Ana Katrina Marshall because the materials are um, created under the their program on um, course development training. So this, uh, these two workshops, Rojas and my uh, presentations, were actually spearheaded by um, the OECs. So they are they are actually part of one bigger course development training program that Prof. Marshall is um, spearheading. Thank you. I think sorry, I'm just be less fair. You know, my questions, po ba kayo? My Roja and I will be um, available to. Sorry, Thank you, Professor Dexter. Uh, professor, <laughs> Professor Roja Rivera and Professor Sharif Reyes. Maraming maraming salamat po. Actually, noong una, marami po akong katanungan bilang ang moderator. Pero during your presentation, actually, nasagot na po lahat yung mga tanong ko. <laughs> yung what would be the best advice to do right now na hindi talaga pwedeng maglabang bata. And I agree with your work kanina na mahirap i-risk ang safety ng mga bata kahit na kitchen lab sila. Actually, yes. I was really planned to do kitchen lab eh. Pero tama po kayo na juristi pa rin, kahit simple pa rin, pa rin ang mga activity, and then there is also a question of accountability to that. And right now po, while we are waiting for our viewers to ask questions and to post their comments and whatever things they would like to share with us, pakinggan po muna natin ang message ng ating university president, si Dr. Honorio M. Soriano Jr. bago po tayong mag-entertain ng questions. Sige po, Dr. Soriano, join us. <laughs> Adin po si sir. Abang hinihintay natin si sir. Alam ko, marami na naman kami natutunan. Last time it's about math. This time it's about science. And it was really a big discussion paano nga po gagawin ng mga laboratory activities. At nahirapan po kami mag-design ng flexible learning modality just because considering those things. <laughs> Naintindihan po namin yun. Actually, Kaya familiar kami dun sa feeling nyo kasi we were in the same position. And tabi nga nung, ni Prof. Marshall dun sa isa naming forum, uh, kami nga nung pinili na namin pumunta dun sa state na yun. It was by choice that we, are, we were there. And yet, nahirapan pa kami. Lalo pa siguro yung, lalo na siguro pag uh, you were left with just this choice. Yes. Diba? Forced land circumstances. Mm -hmm. So we really understand. And we were caught on the way this new normal. But I think baka may kamiti niya ta si Dr. Soriano in another line. So we will be entertaining questions and comments right now. I have the first question. 
from the chair of the Flex Learning Modality Task Force because it's a big so mga maraming ito kami or students have poor reading comprehension and having difficulty following written instructions especially kapag nasa lower years pa sila do you have any advice on how can we address this challenge? Kayo po, sa inyo pong point of view as experienced um, online teachers. Okay. And from my point of view, uh, there are two ways on attacking the problem. Eh. Uh, from an uh, institutional level and from the course level. Institutional level, um, kasi higher ed na to eh, no? So, before pa sana sila pumasok doon sa mga courses nila, uh, kung na-identify na natin na ito yung mga learning gaps ng mga estudyante, yung competency nila ay hindi pa fully developed para sa higher ed, um, we could prepare sa institutional level ito ng mga bridge programs for them to develop the skills needed to become successful in their courses. Kasi I think itong reading comprehension, hindi lang naman to uh, concern ng science department or ng math department. Ito, concern to ng lahat ng departments eh, di ba? So, uh, dahil ito ay concern ng lahat ng, um, ng programs, dahil basic skill ang reading comprehension, um, pwedeng bago pa lang sila mag-immerse uh, sa mga courses nila, na mag-provide ng intervention um, before the the start of classes for bridge program. Ngayon, kung halimbawa, <clears throat> hindi pa, no? uh, as a, pwedeng in the works pa lang siya, pwedeng simulan pa lang. Uh, habang wala pa yon, pwedeng within the course, may intervention din si teacher. Although mahirap to kasi hindi lang naman isang concern, hindi lang to concern ng isang professor, di ba? Um, so kung halimbawa problem ang reading comprehension, pwede talagang isupplement yung written materials with audio or um, video explanations kung kinakailangan talaga. No? Pero sa simula, we hope na sa simula lang yun. Kasi supposedly dapat sinascaffold natin eh. Hindi pwedeng pag, pagdating ng end ng, ng term, ganun pa rin yung issue nila. Diba? So dapat um, na nasusupplement ito or na na-address ito during the term. Um, so, I guess ako, I strongly would recommend na dalawang approach itong gawin. Hindi lang ito, i-depend sa mga faculty na uh, may mga specific uh, concerns then na dapat i-address dahil dun sa discipline nila at dun sa learning objectives na kailangan nilang imit. Um, so, they are, there has to be a support na ibigay for the students through a, a bridge program na offer ng at the institutional level. So kung may po kayo office of student affairs, so kung may office of student affairs po kayo, mag, magandang maging proyekto po ito ng office of student affairs ng mga bridge uh, program for yun nga mga basic skills na supposed din na develop na nila sa basic ed. Thank you very much po Assistant Professor Roja for that nice response. We'll take that into consideration. It's always looking at the learning impediment of the learner kung ano yung na miss nila and we have to tackle that. Uh, what about po kay Assistant Professor Reyes? Well, kasi yung at least it's can be Marami, mas madami talaga yung calculation and if you deliver that na uh, online, medyo mahirap. Ang pasensya na po kayo na medyo maingi yung background ko kasi lunch time na po sa amin. Anyway, um, so uh, how, how, sa course level kasi ang ginagawa ko, I just give them small. Sabi nga ni Roja, you scaffold it from the beginning of the semester pero you increase the requirement for community um efforts towards the end. So, may mga maliliit ka muna sa simula. So, module 1 ko, tsaka module 2 talaga, reading doon ay halos 2 to 3 sentence paragraphs lang. 
uh, hanggat maaari. Tapos yung mga form of um, content ay nakadeliver not just in the reading format but also in audio and video format as mentioned by Roma. So, hindi lang iisang format para maka-access ka ng students na hirap sa reading. Pero mayroon ka namang student na mas gusto niya ng reading kaysa kaysa audio sa uh, video format, di ba? So, uh, we provide those kinds of alternatives, especially in the beginning. We don't know yet what kind of students are doing in our classes. Uh, uh, what needs do they have? So sometimes that's how I do it for my classes. Small uh, portions at the beginning and then variety of types of resources. <laughs> small portion sa una tapos ginagawang variety na lang the long run. I think that will work. Uh, Mag-umpisa sa easy tapos increasing in difficulty. Anyway po, uh, before we continue with the question and answer portion, I think Dr. Soriano is already available. Yes, Dr. Soriano, you're muted. Okay, I think my uh, difficulty for the internet connection ni, ni Sir Dexter. So uh, to give us a message, may I request po si Dr. Honor M. Suryana Jr. na nakasama po natin ngayon. Sir? si President na wala po. So, okay. So, I'll just continue po. Let's have, habang inintay po natin si President, let's continue the Q&A. So, isab ko po muna si, si Sir Dexter. So, there's also another question po dito is, um, ito po. So, what are the best assessment techniques po used in science curriculum and how does it differ from the other types of assessments? What are the best assessment techniques? Actually, um, wala kasing formulaic um, answer. Parang walang formula sa best. Uh, the best is the one that will work uh, for your students and the one that is appropriate uh, to your learning objectives and the one that um, will allow you to um, measure the achievement of students uh, in terms of how well they have achieved the learning objective. So, kung ha hard and fast rule, wala naman talagang hard and fast rule na absolute ito yung best. So, lagi-lagi, kaya kailangan, as I said before, um, important ang professional judgment. Kaya importante talaga na, na uh, alam natin yung prinsipyo na pinanggagalingan para yung basis natin for choosing an assessment is principled and well-informed. So kung ano ang sinasabi ng learning objective mo na skills na idinidevelop mo sa studyante mo, edi yun din yung assessment na ibibigay mo sa kanila. So it is your learning objectives that will uh, dictate the type of assessment that you will provide. Um, hindi siya mag, yung mga assessment sa science, makakategorize mo din siya under the different types of assessment mentioned before. So, uh, kung ano yung learning of, kung yung um, assessment mo ay based sa appropriateness niya doon sa learning objectives mo. So, kung ang objective mo niya requires si student to do hands-on um, activities, Eddie, you have to provide an assessment or a learning activity that will enable them to do just, just that, the uh, hands-on, to perform your skills. Kung ang hini-require naman ng learning objective mo is for the students to explain, uh, uh, to demonstrate their understanding through ex explanation of concepts, Eddie, your assessment method mo should incorporate um, that, yung explanation of the concept, no? So, kung paano, kung paano yung um, form ng output 
doon na lang mag, mag-iiba-iba yan. Depende sa kung ano yung resource meron ka at ano yung resource meron yung estudyante mo. Diba? So, madami kasing, uh, so, kung mag explain siya, madaming forms. So, pwede through discussion forum, pwede through paper, um, through lab report, or activity worksheets na ipoprovide mo. So, madaming forms, pero ang, 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 um, what we have to think about is um, madidemonstrate ba ng estudyante mo yung skills and knowledge na nire-require as stated in the learning objective. So, yun. So, wala, hindi talaga natin masasabi na may isa lang assessment or kung baga, ito yung assessment technique na best. Depende talaga yan sa sitwasyon, depende sa objectives mo. So you have to go back to your goals, to your objectives. Hello, checking again. Sorry What's for that? that? Little problem. Nawala na ako ng connection dito sa office. <laughs> na wala na ako bigyan ng connection dito sa office. Here is a question. Nasagot na po ba ito? Ano yung naka-flash the screen? Ito po yung kay Sir Gatan. Hindi pa po. Okay. Yung pong question natin from Mr. Wong. Paki-flash po ulit. Dr. Gerald, yung question ni Mr. Wong here. Nasa mo yan. Hinahanap po namin. Hey, Bigla Sir Wong, yan na. Sir Kian, yan <laughs> Wong. Uh, I think nag-respond uh, yata ako. Uh, itong kay Sir Gatan na po yung next question. Um, I think sasagot naman po niyo ba this like, hindi lang gamit na LMS na UT Open University dito ba? Uh, may question po sa comment section. May model nga po ang gamit. So, yes po, tama na model. Tama na? Yes po, yes, model po ang gamit. Uh, here. Uh, a question can you what work with or what you do for science At, sir, sorry, hindi namin masyadong narinig yung question mo. Uh, eh, ano po ba yung question ni Sir Wong? Yung question po ni Sir Wong? Yes, I think I responded to this already, sir. Itong kay Sir Wong. Ah, okay po. Nawala ko sa akin. Ako, yun nawala po kayo, sir. So, are there any other questions from our from our group, Kaya? Ito po, kay Sir Gatan. Yung kay Sir Gatan po, sabi niya, if a student will be assessed by schedule one by one, is there a method on how you will assess their class participation or interaction? Okay. So, depende po sa inyong design. So, kung may group work po kayo, yes, there is a way. So, you provide then the students with the guidelines on how they will do peer assessments. And then you can provide them with the rubric which the students can use to assess their peers. And, the, and then these um, field out rubrics can be submitted to you para makita po ninyo yung peer assessment uh, results ng, um, ng students. Uh, so kung halimbawa naman po meron kayong mga online discussion forums, you will be able to see their uh, participation and their level of interaction with their peers uh, in that um, forum discussion po. So, uh, yan po. Uh, those are some of the ways that we can assess their participation. Well, dadagdag ko lang dun, Ro, Prof. Rohano, na sa DE or sa online mode kasi there are three interactions that we have to consider. Yung learner content interaction, yung learner-learner interaction, saka yung learner-teacher uh, interaction. So, there are many ways to make sure that all these three interactions are um, observed 
at a particular instance, for example. Pero kung ang gusto mong i-highlight ay learner-learner interaction, usually, yung mga binanggit ni Roja, they actually facilitate learner-learner interaction. Ano ba yung gusto natin? Sila yung nag interact uh, Kasi walang classroom. Baka kasi yung tinutukoy ni um, Professor Gatan ay uh, nasa isang classroom, nagpa-participate sila parang recitation, kino-convert natin yung ganong notion of class participation to say like um, discussion forum or in you post a question, students participate in. That's one way of them interacting with you as the teacher and with their peers. So that's another thing. Of course, Roha mentioned uh, group activity or project wherein students can actually do peer assessment. So, yun yeah. uh, yung mga learner-learner interactions. Sige. Wow. And even even in, sa group uh, work, kung halimbawa nag-create ka ng um, space within your LMS kung saan doon magko-collaborate yung mga group, mamomonitor mo din naman yung performance nila with each other, eh, di ba? Kung learner to learner yung interaction nga na tinitingnan mo. Kung uh, with the content naman, depende sa uh, assessment method na ibinigay mo, kung may discussion forum ka or other learning activities sa kailangan the students will be engaged with the content. And then through their engagement with the content, they are able to uh, create an output and then submit it, di ba? Uh, to the class for everyone to see, eh di makikita mo rin kaya yung level of engagement and interaction nila with the content. Um, so yun. So yun yung, yun yung participation actually ng students in an online setting eh. Yung kung paano siya nag-i-engage, ni-engage yung sarili niya with studying the content, with the resource. And you will see that do sa outputs niya. Diba? Um, so, meron din siyang yung engagement niya with uh, his or her peers na ma magagawa naman niya through yun niya, mga collaborative activities na pwede mong i-provide uh, sa students mo. So, it depends on how you design your course. Thank you very much po, Ma'am Sha and Ma'am Roja for those insights. Based from your responses, nakita po ko po na talagang importante yung pagpaplano in the design yes. of the assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, napakalaking investment talaga ng time, na investment ng time to prepare such things. That's what yes. I understand from the presentation and we have to be resourceful. If something mm -hmm. doesn't work, we try doing something else. Parang ganun po mm -hmm. ako ang importante. Yes. Bagay mm -hmm. dapat makakuha mo na sa pag-assess ng mga studyante sa science eh. I think wala na po yata katanungan mula sa ating mga online viewers and I think they're satisfied and dami po nang na-share ninyo ngayon. And Sir, may isa pa question. I may isa pa question. Ang kami question. Hindi ako yung may question. May isa pa ang question. I think important yung last question. Yeah. Ah, may isa pa ang question. Apo. Sorry, ngayon, nagkakapop lang kasi niya. So, I'm good. We are from... Ms. Evelyn Barquez Kahukom, what if po kung offline or print-based po mode of learning na gamit na ihahatid sa mga bata sa mga bayo nila? Any suggestion po sa mga details na dapat ma-address? Yes, they are learning packages na ipapadala sa bata. Ano po kayo yung mga detalye na magandang i-address natin dyan? I think this is a very good question. Um, siguro bago ko sagutin yung question, kailangan ko din naman malaman muna kung anong klaseng, paano nyo i-design yung um, modules nyo na print-based. Um, kasi doon, do, yun yung magiging basis ng answer eh. Um, meron ba silang textbook na kasama? Uh, or magsusulat ba ng module yung teacher, andun na lahat ng content, na il ilalagay nila doon lahat ng mga visuals, graphics. Uh, kasi I understand this is science, eh. science courses. So paano nyo isusulat yung uh, modules ninyo? Or paano nyo gagawin yung, yung materials ninyo? Um, kasi magiging relevant yan doon sa kung paano din kayo mag-a-assess. Kasi kung ano lang yung ipoprovide nyo na resource sa estudyante nyo, yun lang din yung magagamit ng estudyante ninyo yun para ma-accomplish niya yung, yung assessment na ipoprovide ninyo. 
Um, so, uh, so ito pa ay doon sa mga estudyante na talagang wala silang connection no sa internet at wala silang devices. So ang talagang ang sole source lang talaga nila or sole resource nila ay yung ipo-provide ninyo. So yan ba ay module lang na ginawa ninyo or may kasama pa silang handbook, uh, workbook, activity sheets, um textbooks and the like. Hmm. So, kung ganun lang, uh, so kung yun lang ang mapuprovide natin sa mga estudyante, magiging, in a way, restrict din yung student, yung teachers, and at the same time, yung students sa type of assessment na maibibigay nila. So, most probably, ang mga assessment forms na pwede natin ibigay, maglalan sa mga traditional forms of assessment. Kung may alternative forms of assessment ka, medyo malilimit din dahil hindi naman na-demonstrate sa kanila yung skills uh, na supposedly dapat nilang gawin kung magpa-performance-based assessment. So, in a way, madi-disadvantage yung students if you ask them to demonstrate a skill that they were not able to uh, see or hindi na model sa kanila dahil walang resource for that. So, kaya kapag print-based, uh, limited talaga ang assessment. Magiging mas traditional form of assessment na maibibigay natin. Uh, Siguro, Rog, yun yung mahalaga na for the institution to decide on. If I, if, okay. I don't know if I'm allowed to make a suggestion, but maybe the institution should think about how many modes do you want this to deliver Hindi pa nga want eh. Uh, siguro nga, okay, given na na hindi po sila lahat merong internet connection, given din po na hindi sila lahat merong computer, uh, pero kung maghahanda ka ng dalawang modalities at this point, mula, magkakaroon ka na ng difference from the point of learning resources, learning activities, and then assessments. So sa tatlong aspeto na yan, uh, these three for print base and then these three for online mode. It'll, it he can only imagine the volume of um, work. So if I hindi pa dahil traditional siya, so third pa yung traditional mode of teaching. So imagine niyo na you're shifting from what you're used to, say traditional teaching, and then the one form is online. You will transform everything online, and then the other one you will transform via distance ed, na print based. Wala kaming, feeling ko, pinaka-low-tech yung print-based na ibibigay mo yung um, text sa kanya in print form. Yeah, uh, minimum ang tech requirement nun. Pero hindi pareho ng learning yung nasa online format sa yung nasa, di, nasa print format. Definitely, hindi sila pareho ng learning. So how can you make sure that the assessment of learning will be on the same standards, uh, I mean, they will have the same standard of assessment. Uh -oh. uh, medyo problematic. Yes, yun. problematic siya kaya, talaga. Kung kaya sana nating mag-decide on what, oh, at saka siguro isa mas din na... Kung hindi talaga kaya uh, siguro, kunwari, well, ang naiisip ko, ko lang naman po, po, may mga local government units na pwede nito. So, baka pwede, okay, sampung buto, pang, ay sa isang pampang, talagang wala ng capacity. Diba? So, pwede silang sama sa sa edu na pag gusto sa kanila install ng dalawang computer set or request sa mayor, pwede ba lang pumakito sa classroom to, ito to, or maliit pace ng CPO, pop sila ito every office schedule uh, para magda nila kung yung base yan, meron sorry, sorry, we can yeah, is just, we choose sana one mode if there's a possibility to even do that. We can entertain, if we can entertain the possibility of doing one mode. Kasi ang hirap po nung dua. 
Ang hirap pagtugmain ng standard. Kasi we understand na isa major consideration yung digital divide, di ba? Um, so, ganito. Uh, eh, yung mga options na in-explore ay, yun nga, dual, dual mode. May online ka, meron print-based or offline, no? Um, tapos, meron kang isa na lang, either online or print-based. Uh, pero, uh, ang nasa-sense namin, dahil nga merong mga walang access sa uh, internet at digi uh, digital devices, mukhang ang leaning towards print-based. Pero we have to consider then na um, yung level, yung richness ng learning, um, maaring masacrifice kung print-based lang tayo. Kasi lahat ng affordances ng online, hindi, kumbaga, kung dati 16% lang ang hindi makaka-avail ng affordances ng online resources and online um, materials na pwede niyong magamit sa courses ninyo to enrich the learning, Dahil difficult na nga, dahil nga online na to eh, distance learning na nga tayo eh. Um, ang, uh, kung hindi natin mamamaximize yon dahil may 16%, ibig sabihin yung 100% of your students will not, not be able to maximize the, the affordances of, uh, of, of online resources. Kung magpiprint based na lang tayong lahat. In, so, ang nakikita ko, uh, sa point of view ko, sa halip na ang mangyayari, lahat na lang sila madidisadvantage dahil hindi nila na-avail yung um, uh, amenities na pwede sana nilang ma-avail through online dahil nag-print-based na lang tayo. Why not ita ang itaas natin ay yung 16%? So, hindi sila... So, uh, so ang i-adjust natin siguro ay yung lack of access nila. Sa halip na tanggalan natin ng access lahat, sila, bigyan natin sila ng access. So, yung sinasuggest ni Ma'am Cha kanina, so baka may way na pwedeng makipag-coordinate sa mga LGUs kung saan nandoon yung mga estudyante natin na baka maaaring pwedeng maging, magtalaga sila ng isang learning center kung saan pwedeng doon may mga computer um, terminals, pwedeng doon mag-access ang mga estudyante na located dun sa area na yun. So, that's an option, di ba? Or kung meron kayong mga um, mga alumni or mga yung mga influential people ng Pampanga na pwedeng uh, mag-extend ng help, mag-provide doon sa mga uh, pangailangan ng 16% of your pop student population na walang access. No? So, baka pwedeng yun yung maging isang way Kasi kung iisipin natin na kung ipiprint base natin lahat sila, eh di lahat sila madidisadvantage. Dahil ito, sa to, hindi talaga magiging ganun ka-rich ang learning experience ng estudyante kung nalimit lang siya sa print. ba yung, yung experience niya with the content mababawasan. Dahil wala siyang ibang um, basis of, of learning kundi yung text. As opposed sa uh, marami pa sa anong option kung merong siyang access online. So, iyon yung mga, mga decision points, I think, na kailangan pag-isipan ng institution uh, kung paano nila ma-address itong problem na ito. Kasi other other universities uh, definitely will move towards online. Kapag nag pre tayo, tayo, uh, most probably, nadi-disadvantage yung students dahil yung ibang estudyante, they will access online talaga. Ngayon, pwedeng sabihin na, oh, kahit naman print-based yung mga 84% ng estudyante na may access sa internet, mag internet yan to supplement the print-based. Pero, edi eh, di ganun din. Hindi pa rin, uh, yung equity issue pa rin andun. ba so, magiging richer pa rin yung learning noong may access sa internet kahit print-based ang mode ninyo dahil may alternative siya na mag-search pa, pa for other resources online. At yung mga estudyante na talagang walang ibang choice kundi yung print-based module, uh, edi hanggang doon lang din talaga yung learning experience na mapuprovide for them. So, kaya yun siguro yung mga kailangang i-way. Ano ba yung kaya nating i-sacrifice? Uh, ano ba yun? Baka may way naman 
para ma-lift natin yung situation ng 16% rather than yan kasi yung situation nyo so ito na lang yung level of learning na pwede para sa inyo. So, so yung, yeah. dinawin lang din natin, Roch, no, na uh, yung print-based, hindi lang siya yung print as in print, print at pinotocopy tapos nasa papel. Uh, print-based din kung masasabi yung heavily text lang. Walang multi wala nang ibang multiple mode of um, content presentation. So, for example, uh, walang video, walang audio, kasi nga, hindi kaya ng kabilang 16%. So, uh, hindi necessarily physically print yung material. If it is just a PDF file uh, in digital format, considered pa rin yun na print. Diba? I mean, baka kasi ganun yung iniisip na, yung iba na actually, yung 84% naka PDF file naman sila, hindi nga wala namin sila papadala ng papel. Pero text pa rin yun eh, diba? So, yes, exactly. Yun nga yung point, ko, point mo din, diba? Na hindi yes. na, ngayon, pare-pareho na sila ng mode of learning. Isa nga lang nakapapel, yung isa naka-USB. Pero, ang baba nung, hindi ganun ka-reach yung learning experience mga kuha nila kasi purely text yun two-dimensional. So, at gusto ko din i-clarify, hindi namin sinasabing walang learning na mangyayari sa print-based. May learning, pero ang question ay yung richness, yung depth, at yung pwede pa sana uh, nilang ma-develop kung meron lang sana sila nung iba pang mode, nung iba pang modality at medium, di ba? Kasi ang rich na ngayon ng mga learning resources, eh, uh, biro nyo, may mga lab, mga virtual labs, may mga simulations, di ba, na pwedeng uh, na kong, magiging concrete sa kanila yung maraming bagay. Three-dimensional nilang makikita yung mga dati ma discuss mo lang sa papel. Uh, lahat naman tayo, I think, dumati, dumaan sa print-based lang na textbook. Pero di ba, ngayon na nakikita na natin na wow, ang mga estudyante, marami na din talaga silang uh, mas magiging richer and mas meaningful yung learning nila kasi ang dami-dami ng Um, medium of instruction, yung mga uh, uh, may multimedia component na, na makakatulong sa kanila para mas mapalalim yung understanding nila. Um, so, yun yung mawawala kapag print-based lang. Uh, hindi natin sinasabi na wala silang matututunan. Ang sinasabi lang natin, hindi siya magiging ganong ka-rich sana as we would like them to have diba yung type of learning that we would like them to have and at the same time may disadvantage din sila sa mga contemporary nila na meron naman access sa internet diba so yun i think siguro ang pwede natin talagang pag-isipan paano natin may elevate yung 14% ah 16% ng estudyante natin na walang ano baka sila yung pwedeng matulungan Um, last time do sa informal conversation, na bring up nga yung Pasig actually meron silang sariling effort, di ba? Na na masuplayan yung uh, student population nila para sa shift sa online. So I know um, mahirap siyang gawin, um, pero maybe we could try para at least maging equitable yung learning na yung 16% may angat natin para ma-enjoy din nila yung quality of learning na pwede sana man nila ma-enjoy kung may access lamang sila. So yun. So yun po. <laughs> Food for thought. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much for your insight. Talagang it's all for equitable learning and providing opportunities for our students. Kung kaya naman ng university with the partnership of the local government unit, why not? And I, and I agree with that. Marami naman kayong generous pati ng alumnos, alumni, ganyan. Tsaka madami yung philanthropist sa Pampanga. At ang alam ko, madaming mayaman sa Pampanga. <laughs> so, hindi <pwede> silang matap. <laughs> Probably, magagawan po ng paraan ng university yung ganoong issue. Since yun nga po. Uh, gumawa kami ng survey at lumabas sa resulta ng survey ay eh, marami sa mga estudyante namin ang meron naman silang device for technological learning pero hindi enough ang hindi enough ang kanilang resources for internet connection probably we can consider that hello
second. Ayan. I think wala na pong katanungan. Uh, may question pa po ba mula sa ating mga online viewers? Since wala pong pinapost naman si Dr. Salas na new questions, I think that ends the question and answer portion. So at this juncture, uh, I'll be calling back our university president. And na po ba siya? Is the connection already all right? If not po, Oh, that's good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Narinig ba ko? Good morning po. Good morning, uh, Professor uh, Roja uh, Rivera and uh, Professor Kia Reyes. Uh, first of all, I would like to commend you for uh, coming over to be our resource speakers. At uh, I uh, appreciate your commitment uh, to, to share your expertise to our faculty members at the Pampanga State Agricultural University. Yeah, I, I was uh, monitoring the questions and answers portion. Uh, I would like to uh, emphasize that definitely uh, we will be uh, uh, practically uh, online in our uh, delivery of the teaching learning uh, to our students. At uh, uh, parang backup lang ito sa online, itong print uh, materials uh, just to enhance the, the learning uh, ability of our students. So uh, practically uh, lahat ng at mode of delivery ay puro online pero to be back up uh, with print materials and other resources just to help the students learn uh, and uh, achieve the desirable learning outcome ng ating mga itinuturo sa kanila. So uh, uh, I would like also to thank our uh, faculty members uh, for joining us uh, so, uh, as participants in this webinar. Uh, napaka live and uh, uh, productive yung ating interaction. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, we are still in the process of making adjustments. And what we are trying to uh, install in our learning management uh, platform will not be uh, perfect uh, immediately. We will do a lot of adjustments as we go on. The most important thing is we have got to start something uh, as part of our preparedness, uh, particularly kung tayo ay mag-open na ng classes this coming August. So, napakaganda ng talakayan. Ultimately, ang role natin sa university particularly ang ating mga faculty members, is to help the students learn uh, how to learn better. You know? Kasi uh, as mentor, we are not only teachers, we are also mentors, and we have to help the students learn how to learn. Uh, kasi wala tayong uh, naituro kung wala silang kapasidad din na matuto. So we have to help them learn how to learn. Uh, yan ang pinaka-challenging part ng mentor. Uh, kasi kung teacher ka lang, uh, magturo ka na magturo, pero without due uh, consideration to the ability of the students uh, to uh, uh, learn uh, what we are teaching about. So uh, uh, regarding dun sa uh, issue about uh, yung slow learners or students na mababa yung comprehension, I think uh, it's now the time for our uh, student services, our guidance and counseling unit to uh, uh, to do, to initiate uh, activities to address itong uh, challenge ng uh, poor reading comprehension ng mga estudyante. 
uh, that's why meron tayong guidance and counseling. So we are we are trying to integrate uh, activities to help the students. Uh, yung mga poor uh, study habits, uh, pati yung mababa yung kanilang comprehension na matulungan din sila. And uh, I think the different colleges in our university ay meron tayong admission and retention policy but again, uh, tignan din natin kung paano matulungan yung mga estudyante na magkaroon ng uh, uh, desirable uh, study habits lalong-lalo na na tayo ay nasa transformation from uh, pure uh, residential uh, modality to uh, flexible learning modality. So, uh, nagdun pa rin sa ating uh, flexible learning platform yung face-to-face. -face. Uh, kaya lang we need to limit the size of our classes. Uh, in addition to offline, meron din tayong mga sessions na face-to-face. Now, we limit the number of students in our class to a maximum of 20 and observing strictly yung uh, distance, uh, 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 what do you call this, social distancing and physical distancing. So uh, uh, even in the scheduling of classes and uh, assigning uh, faculty members, magkakaroon ng mga adjustments. So it will not be, but uh, as I've said, uh, uh, majority of our delivery will be uh, online, but to be backed up by uh, print materials and face-to-face -face, uh, residential mode, uh, reducing the size of the class. So uh, we are also working uh, for the possibility sa mga laboratory subjects uh, to install yung mga simulators. Uh, we are now negotiating with our uh, contractors dito sa uh, flexible learning modality na isama yung mga uh, simulators. Halimbawa, sa mga engineers, sa mga technology, uh, meron tayong mga simulation para sa mga estudyante, bago mag uh, hands-on, ay eh, dadaan din sila dito sa sim simulator. Uh, para sa ganun, uh, it will not be only uh, knowledge or uh, say uh, exposure to uh, online, but we also uh, do some uh, hands-on. Kasi hindi natin may iwasan sa agricultural university. Halimbawa, yung magpatakbo ng traktora, eh, hindi pwede na puro online. So dapat din may, may experience yung estudyante at matuto rin sila kung paano mag-araro o maggagamit ng mga uh, traktora. At dapat din ang faculty, marunong din magpatakbo ng traktora. Parang kung ganun ang ating approach. So, uh, pagtyagaan natin ito, mga kapatid, faculty members, as I've said, uh, we are all uh, making a lot of adjustments uh, para ma-embrace natin itong uh, new uh, platform, flexible learning modality. At napagaganda ng uh, topic ngayon, yung designing the assessment, uh, designing uh, assessment. Uh, nabanggit kanina na uh, kung pure online, ay hindi masyadong uh, magkalayo yung uh, traditional. Kaya lang, uh, sabi ko noon, uh, dito sa, sa ating university, uh, basically online, pero to be backed up by print uh, module modules, that's why kasama sa training natin ngayon yung paano gumawa ng module, Pero naka ano pa rin, yung module i-online pa rin natin. Uh, pero yung mga estudyante na may kahirapan sa, sa internet, we will be uh, working together with, uh, collaborating with the LGU. Kaya meron tayong LGU Connect para makipag-usap tayo sa LGU. Uh, tulungan tayo dito sa mga estudyante na hindi makakapagkaroon ng uh, internet. Tama yung sabi ni ni uh, Roha kanina pati yung alumni baka tulong yung mga 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 LGU na magput up ng uh, internet center para yung mga estudyante eh pwede nilang magamit yung mga 
uh, computer at makinabang dito sa online uh, delivery of uh, teaching learning uh, uh, in our university. So, uh, ako ay lubot na nagpapasalamat sa ating mga resource persons from UP Open University. Uh, Lalong-lalo na si Prof. Uh, Kia Reyes ay uh, direct from Australia na nagde-deliver yung kanyang uh, uh, presentation. Uh, salamat, uh, Madam. Salamat din kay uh, Prof. Roa uh, Rivera. Uh, sa inyong pagsisikap na matulungan kami, I am uh, confident that our faculty members have learned a lot and no amount of seminar that will make us more effective unless we will apply what we have learned uh, out of this uh, seminar. So uh, rest assured that the university will continue to invest uh, our resources uh, to help our faculty members and everybody to embrace uh, the challenge of uh, new normal dito sa ating university, lalong lalo na sa undergraduate level. Kasi sa UP Open University, most of the students are already at the graduate level. So itong mga undergrad, medyo challenging ito, uh, lalong lalo na. Hindi lang some of our students are poor in comprehension, most of our students are uh, poor in reading comprehension. So this is a big challenge. But uh, as we work together addressing this challenge, I think there is nothing impossible. So maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Mabuhay po ang ating mga resource persons. Mabuhay ang uh, faculty members ng Pampanga State Agricultural University. God bless po. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much po, Dr. Soriano. Lalo na po sa inyong support na palagi sa lahat ng PSAU employees at sa panahong ito na kung saan tayong lahat ay nag adjust for the new normal. Sa ating resource speakers kanina na sadyang napakarami talagang nasa sa atin na bago, Assistant Professor Troja Rivera and Charisse Reyes, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong mga ibigay sa amin kanina. At this juncture, to formally close this program, um, a call the screen to Dr. Gerald Salas for his closing remarks and announcement. So Gerald, please take it away. Thank you, Sir Dexter. So, um, again po, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating resource person, si Ma'am Cha and Ma'am Roja. Si Ma'am Cha ay straight from uh, Australia. So, maraming maraming salamat po. And Thank you rin po kay President Soriano and na wala pong sawang sumusuporta sa mga faculty members po natin. And of course, kay, uh, kay sa Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Anita G. David, for the continuous support po. So I just have a few announcements po. Um, to access, uh, yung pong task force, we created a Google site wherein we can access po yung ating mga presentations. So yung pong ating uh, Link, it is bit.ly slash PSAUFLM. So dito po, uh, we'll be posting yung pong ating mga copies po ng mga past presentations. At the same time, dito rin po yung mga announcements po ng mga upcoming webinars. So another po is, ito po yung ating mga upcoming webinars. This is in coordination with External and International Affairs Office o ng Pampanga State Agricultural University. So we have... Um, Four speakers. So on June 30, po, uh, we'll be talking about this more likely more of po, sa stress and anxiety management at the student level, uh, at, the, at the faculty level, and at the same time po, on how are we going to hand, handle anxious learners. Then another po is on July 1, it will be on cybersecurity. So ito po yung pong ating mga upcoming webinars. So again po, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga faculty members na wala din pong sawang uh, nanonood sa ating mga webinars and also to all other participants na gagaling pa po sa iba't ibang lugar. And maraming maraming salamat po. Sir Dexter? Thank you very much, Dr. Dela Sala. It has to be everyone.
to all our online viewers, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pag-tune in at patuloy na pagsisiwala sa Pampanga State Agricultural University Flexible Learning Modality Task Force. Sana po marami po kayo natutunan every time na kayo ay tumututok para sa programa ito. Muli po, isa po napakasayang umaga. Thank you very much. And by the way, this afternoon will be the graduation, online graduation of Pampanga State Agricultural University Batch 2020. So see you later this afternoon for the online graduation. At sa iba pang online viewers naman, see you for our next webinar session. This has been your moderator, Mr. Dexter Andrew Omanalo, saying magandang buhay, Pilipinas, and see you again. With that, goodbye. Well.